Chapter 41 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Another sliding door opened inside the paw s. Sageway. Owl 9 went in, and then he brought out a couple of masks that could cover half of one's face. Guzwa took one and pressed it onto his face. It felt a bit like a novelty. Was this a legendary item that could hide one's ident? I. Tie. Something that must be used to go to this thing. In other words, this indicated that the stronghold's affairs were not fit to be seen in the light. Part of the rules, and all that. He didn't think about it for too long. After waiting for Gongyi Tianhang to put on his own mask, a group of people walked in a line. In an instant, many clamorous noises reached their ears. Before their eyes was a bright glare. Guzwa blinked. Once he adjusted after a few seconds, he discovered that everything here seemed to have practically switched like heaven and earth. To compare, it gave a person such a strong sense of mental pressure, not at all like the outside. However, not only were the people here very raucous, but the fiendish auras about them were quite heavy. Just as they came in, the stench of blood as but sailed their noses and instantly, many heated gazes were directed at them. There were many people, but not everyone wore masks. And the people who wore masks gave others the feeling of incompatibility. Clearly, those wearing masks were people who were given referrals and came in from the outside. Those who didn't wear masks were either people who'd been here a long time or were as the SAS that sins of the ghost division. Within the crowd was an elevated stage made of black rock. On the stage were two people in the middle of fighting to the death. Unexpectedly, there was a beautiful woman near the edge of the stage. She wore tight dot fitting clothing, which especially accentuated her figure's SEX appeal. The three were all martial artists, but apparently the beautiful woman was the arbitrator for the stage. Guzwa's sight fell upon the elevated stage. The current him also had a bit of visual acuity, so he could make out that the two people fighting had the strength of the bone forging third stage. As for his own cultivation progress, his true chi realm was merely one stage below theirs. He achieved bone forging second stage, but Guzwa knew that if he really fought with these men, they'd definitely kill him in less than a minute. He didn't have the power to resist them whatsoever. And at this time, the man who was on the left side of the stage also didn't have the power to resist. After watching those two exchange blows for a bit, the one on the right suddenly took an evasive step. With an incomparably sharp wind in his hand, he made a horizontal slash. It struck the other man's face, and immediately, there was the sound of the man's skull cracking. The man on the right abruptly leaped forward. He flipped his long leg and shot a kick that unleashed a frightening gale. This move directly shattered the left man's skull. So much red and white brain matter flowed out of the man's face. That beautiful female martial artist's expression was icily arrogant. She immediately declared. Luo Chiohua wins. After she spoke, she bent her waist and used her fair hand to hoist the corpse on the ground by its ankle. She casually threw it into a corner. This strength truly wasn't small. There was a person in the corner who specialized in dealing with corpses, and he dragged it away like taking out the garbage. A long trail of blood was left behind. Martial artists surrounded the elevated, black stone stage. Many of them exposed bloodthirsty smiles. On another wall, there were two words that were etched in gold. He hung. At once, they were harshly erased by a large brush. Everyone was used to it. Underscore 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 Guzwa was speechless. He wasn't so scared of corpses like before, but this world's ATTI. Tude towards human life still left him with lingering fears. He couldn't help thinking that if it weren't for luck and successfully joining up with his patron, his life would probably be like an ant's. A person's soft pinch could turn him into meat paste. Sure enough, he had to persevere in hugging his patron's thigh. Once Gongyi Tianhang watched this round, he gained some understanding of the situation here. Then, he turned around and walked across to a tavern and went past the entrance's awning, one. There were many people on the side drinking alcohol and watching the arena of life and death in amused em de ent. There was the stench of blood on each person's body. The smell was heavy and completely intimidating. 
At the back of the sales counter stood a skinny and shriveled shopkeeper who used a brush to scribble in a filthy book. He seemed ordinary, but his eyes would occasionally shine with vitality. It could let a person see that he wasn't so simple. Owl 9 gave them the rundown. Purchasing human lives for gambling tiles are done here. To speak bluntly, the stronghold had so many people. It was the wizened shopkeeper who was responsible for everything. Tianheng took large strides up to the front of the sales counter and directly slapped 22 gold onto it. Shopkeeper, give me a tile. I want to go have some fun on the stage. The wizened shopkeeper's voice was exasperatingly slow. Once in the arena, life and death are left up to the heavens. Young master has a rich and n do bli life. Don't waste it all for nothing. Gongyi Tianheng chuckled. Thanks for the warning. The wizened shopkeeper slowly continued. This time, he just took out a black tile and directly gave it over. As it happens, there is only one seat remaining ahead, if the young master can wait a little. Tianheng s dan dot a t dot c to head the tile up and proudly said. That's good enough. Owl 9 and the shopkeeper glanced at each other. They already had a mutual understanding. Therefore, Owl 9 gave a flattering smile towards Gong Yi Tianheng. Since the young master is interested, wouldn't it be better to bet? This can be very enjoyable, Gong Yi Tianheng pretended that he couldn't hold back his interest, listening to what Owl 9 had to say. Gu Zua, who watched on from the side, was dumbstruck. For the sake of preventing his expression from ruining everything, he lowered his head. That spectacle a moment ago, why did it seem rather like an act set up on TV? Guzwa's face was practically overshadowed with helplessness. It's good that his patron wanted to conceal his ident I dot tie, but his acting was too lifelike. If his patron was like that when they first met, Guzwa definitely wasn't ready to deal with it. Tianhang was like a burgeoning villain, and following him would turn Guzwa into cannon fodder. Guzwa quickly stopped paying attention to his patron's acting skills. Rather, he focused on what Owl 9 had to say. To put it simply, one could initiate a game of chance with certain odds. Each and every person who came here could gamble if they wanted to. Merely, they could only use gold to bet. The lowest ante was 1 to 2 gold. Guzwa had a bit of a mood. His patron, he could certainly bet on himself, right? One could conduct life or death battles here, and there were only martial artists below the Xiantian realm. His patron was at Meridian condensing third stage. His fighting strength was high and he had many skills. He was definitely not worried about setbacks. Thinking up to here, Guzwa was a little gloomy. Ah, uh. if he was wealthy, he could have definitely placed a bet. But currently, he was being provided for by his patron. He was penniless, with only a huge pile of medicinal herbs. He thought it over again. Actually, winning a bet had no meaning. His patron would package up anything he wanted. Money in his hand was just money. He only felt bad about this kind of situation. Wanting to play, but not being able to play and such. Forget it. Watching his patron play around was the same. He still kept a low profile. Gangi Tianhang didn't fail to live up to Guzwa's expectations. After listening to Al Nine's gossiping for a bit, he still maintained his persona of an arrogant nouveau riche. Facing Guzwa, Tianhang beckoned him by hooking his finger. Guzwa's eyes shined. Right, his patron's money was all with him. He promptly scampered over, each footstep practically creating eddies of wind. Tianhang scoffed. Give me 20,000 in golden banknotes. Guzwa heard this and reached his hand into the lining of his robe, fishing out two 10.000 denomination banknotes. With a fawning smile, he handed them over. Young master, here they are. His acting skills weren't as excellent as his patron's, but he could still be particularly attentive to his patron. Tianhang's eyes flashed with a hint of laughter. He plucked the banknotes between two fingers and threw them down onto the counter in a forthright manner. Then, I'll just go have some fun now. I'll wager a bit of money on this young master. When the shopkeeper in Al9 saw the 20,000 in banknotes, an unusual color streaked across their eyes. 
At this time, sufficient information on Gongyi Tianhang's ident Ayatai was leaked. Casually fishing out 20,000 in golden banknotes to a play, proved that his family's position was at least second tier or higher. His arrogant posturing proved that his position in the family was not low. Since his position wasn't low, it was proof in itself that his innate skill was pretty good or that he had a powerful supporter. As for his fighting strength, it could only be seen after a match on the arena of life and death. The shopkeeper's eye was twitching. An unremarkable person in a side corner received the hint. His figure quickly flashed out, preparing to give Gongyi Tianhong an appropriate opponent. After just a few words, the two martial artists on the black stone stage were already finished. This time, the battling martial artists were a man and a woman, but the man didn't have any tender or protective feelings for the fairer s. Ida X in his heart. The woman also was exceptionally vicious. Two people gambled on their lives and all their moves were aimed at the other person's vital points. Finally, both sides were heavily injured and neither was able to climb back up from the ground. Soon after, in a contest of willpower, it was the female martial artist who grit her teeth and got up. She used a dagger to end the male martial artist's life. She showed no mercy. Guzwa. When he was in the Qi household, he met that energetic servant girl. When he was in the Gongyi mansion, little sister Mingxia's martial strength was out of the ordinary. Previously in the stampeding Oxen Mountain Range, there was the older sister who relentlessly tried to kill that raptor, as well as that arrogant and cruel young miss. And finally here, one who grabbed corpses like they were vegetables, and another who killed people like slaughtering chickens. Did this world actually have any soft girls? The female martial artist was victorious. The referee, who also was a beautiful female martial artist, extended her hand to grasp the victor and threw her off the stage, directly into the arms of a man with a knife scar. Soon after, she grabbed the corpse of that male martial artist and dumped it into the corner for the AS. Signed personnel to handle. Immediately after that, it was Gongyi Tianhang's turn to fight. His opponent wasn't wearing a mask, and his appearance was a little ugly. Altogether, his face was Pa S. Sable, but it didn't have the same appeal as Gongyi Tianhang's half dot covered face. Too, however, this wasn't a problem. Because the people here found that Gongyi Tianhang wore a mask and was a new arrival, the gazes directed at Tianhang carried some contempt. Then, the first round of bets were in full swing. Ugly Bull. I'll wager 200 gold. 50 gold on Ugly Bull. A hundred thirty, ugly bull. I'll bet on ugly bull. Regardless of whether they saw Gongyi Tianhang's behavior before, practically no one bet on Tianhang. Although the odds on the man called ugly bull was one to two and Tianhang reached one to eight, no one chose him. Because in their minds, the seasoned ugly bull who'd yet to die was much too powerful compared to the young master who was pampered and spoiled at home. For this reason, Gu Zua could only light a candle for them. Conveniently, he also gave the accountant, three, here a good point. His dear patron absolutely was a dark horse, four. Reality was also like this. When Gongyi Tianhang jumped onto the stage, they all snorted disdainfully at his mediocre footwork. But when Tianhang started to fight, they no longer believed that they'd win. Underscore 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 one. Peng Zi, awning. However, I think the author is referring to the J. Day at Penny's Norin. 2. It seems Gu Zua's standards have gotten impossibly high. <laughs> 3. Zhuang Jia, the person in charge of handling the wagers. Also known as the bookmaker or bookie. For actual term is, figuratively, a complete unknown who wins a compet I. Tie in. Underscore 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 t slash n guzwa. Just look in a mirror if you're looking for a softy. Thanks to user Carissa for the suggestions. Underscore 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 underscore. Please don't forget to support the chapter 42. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Gongi Tianhang extended an arm, his fist strike already unleashed a chi burst. This chi burst instantly clashed with Ugly Bull's wind claw and caused the claw image to explode. 
Ugly Bull's speed was very fast, and this speed could only let people perceive its oppressive shadow. Previously on every occasion, if his opponent couldn't seize the key moment or be even faster than him, usually this first move would rend flesh. Even if it didn't tear the person's flesh and they were able to dodge in time, it would leave b.l.o.o.d.y marks. The person would suffer internal injuries by the wind claw. But this time, when that wind claw and chi burst clashed, not only was Tianheng unharmed, it was actually Ugly Bull who was shockingly wounded by that surprise attack. His jaw opened and he vomited a mouthful of blood. Ugly Bull was incessantly fearful. You, you, you're strong. Gongyi Tianheng flicked his hand and arrogantly said. The martial skills this young master has practiced isn't something that you can see through. Your reputation is actually so great, but in this young master's hands, you can't withstand a single blow. Ugly Bull's face darkened. Who was this guy? Ugly Bull had so much experience fighting to the death. If he lost under this pampered young master's hands today, then he truly wouldn't be able to save face. Ugly Bull packed away the contempt in his heart and became much more calm a moment later. It seemed to him that what happened now was just a momentary miscalculation. This young master could resist that strike, so the practiced martial skill was of a high rank, and his might was very formidable. However, it seemed that using this kind of high-level martial skill once or twice had inflated this young master's ego. His opponent had never encountered him before, so wouldn't he die in his grasp? This round couldn't be an exception. In the blink of an eye, Ugly Bull's trajectory became crafty and strange. His face revealed a look that was a combination of blood, thirst, and brutality. He was taking things seriously. Gongyi Tianhang's eyes flashed with a hidden light, his palms launching out. Behold my mountain strength, third form. Instantly, a valiant force shot straight out and continuously oscillated no less than three times as it surged at Ugly Bull. An Ugly Bull's reaction was very fast. Once he heard Tianhang's voice, he already changed his move. His form crouched down, intending to avoid the path of that power. Who could have thought that while he evaded it, that power's oscillation was like a proliferating ripple? In the time it took for an old laborer to blink, the pressure on his chest made him vomit another mouthful of blood. Ugly Bull furiously shouted. This isn't mountain strength. Tianhang sneered. You'd believe anything this young master says. Too stupid. Naturally, what he used wasn't mountain strength, but collapsing mountain strength. The former was a human-level low-rank martial skill, and collapsing mountain strength was human-level mid-rank. The differences in power were like heaven and earth. In addition, a great majority of martial artists could get a hold of mountain strength, but collapsing mountain strength only circulated among a few large families. Those who utilized collapsing mountain strength also weren't likely to fall for mountain strength. Everyone below the stage who were watching couldn't help but jeer and reprimand. Ugly bull. Have you gone soft in the head today? Daddies, one a hundred gold. F.U.C.King, two, give it back. Ugly bull, are you not even a match for a newcomer? Ugly bull, kill the new guy. This maiden's, three, monthly commission was bet on you bds.t.r.d.a4. What are you doing? Pay up. Guzwa felt helpless. Ah. His patron's intentions were a little rotten. So lively. In the end, was it truly acting or taking delight in evil? Ugly Bull's expression twisted. Where could he have thought that he'd suffer such a big loss against a newcomer? He thought this was merely an oblivious fool. He never expected that he'd be the one to look like an idiot. Immediately, he didn't concern himself with what Gungyi Tianhang said. He wanted to wholeheartedly kill Tianhang at his own pace. And as for Tianhang. After he briefly showed that his acting persona wasn't completely without a brain, he didn't speak anymore. Only, after undertaking the task before him, he became even more ruthless. Taking responsibility for one's life or death in this arena. He started to experience this kind of feeling fighting another person, but it really wasn't a laughing matter. Gongyi Tianhang became serious. He used three martial skills in total. Collapsing mountain strength, thunderclap punch, and whirlwind leg. 
he used them continuously and unpredictably. It made one unable to predict his next move. From beginning to end, there were ten rounds. Although Ugly Bull was vicious, he was still suppressed by Tianheng, even if Ugly Bull used even more sinister methods or sneak attacks to control the fight, he still couldn't resist Gongyi Tianheng's offensive. Tianheng's every move displayed strength and discipline. He was free and unconstrained. In front of him, Ugly Bull was like a common clown. Ultimately, Tianheng snapped his neck. The corner of Gongyi Tianheng's mouth curved into an arrogant arc. Ha! <laughs> He only amounted to this. His display was so ostentatious, but his mind was actually calm. The feeling of killing a person for the first time. There was almost no feeling at all. If he had to say something, then he felt a hint of his blood boiling. There was also the fact that he previously only had his brains to control huge tracts of clan property. Behind the scenes, he grasped the livelihoods of countless people, even their very lives. However, although that sort of feeling was very refreshing, how could it compare to the vivid sensation of the convergent power in his hands? No, perhaps it wasn't incomparable. Rather, people were always greedy. When a person had martial strength, they'd desire authority. And when a person had authority, they'd desire martial strength. If there was a shortage of the two, then their thoughts were imperceptible. In this world, only martial strength with sufficient power and authority that could harness sufficient help was genuine happiness. Underscore 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 that pampered young master actually won. He won without the slightest injury. When Ugly Bull's corpse fell, the sound of the crash filled the arena. The matter of a new guy killing a veteran had happened before, but those newcomers knew with a look that he was experienced and blood drenched. How could he appear arrogant and brainless now? They thought that this was a rigged game of chance, but he unexpectedly hit the bullseye. It really was difficult for people to accept. Some with discerning eyes attentively sized Tianheng up. They knew about Ugly Bull's strength. Despite not being the strongest, he had many strategies. He could be counted as an expert. And this expert died like that in Gongyi Tianheng's hands. It was truly beyond people's expectations. This caused them to harbor suspicions. This pampered young master truly was a natural talent, but his disposition was frivolous. Or was this a case of disguising as a pig to eat the tiger in order to trick them? The shopkeeper's eyes flashed. All right. The compensation money we owe should be paid. In the end, the people here are our guests. Just then, several people's expressions changed as they yielded and restrained themselves. That's right. In the end, what kind of person was Gongyi Tianheng? If one could understand, then they understood. If they couldn't, then they didn't ask about it. They were the type of people who hid in the dark. Admittedly, it was good to know, but sometimes one had to close their eyes. At this time, Guzwa couldn't control what other people thought or did, at the very minimum. His current ident I.Tai was that of a henchman. He was eagerly attentive as he scampered to the front of the sales counter. What was he doing over there? He went to receive the gambling money. The princey I.Pal was 20,000 in golden banknotes. With 1 to 8 odds, he could withdraw 160,000 gold. Thinking up to here, Guzwa was a little excited. At last he'd finally witnessed his patron's ability to make money firsthand. Even if it was him refining medicine for sale, it'd take a long time to obtain these tens of thousands of gold. His patron only needed one fight to swiftly settle things in order to basically get a huge profit. That wizened shopkeeper also didn't procrastinate as he instructed someone to give Guzwa the sufficiently prepared golden banknotes, which were 10,000 apiece. Without any ambiguity, the shopkeeper pushed them over. Guzwa took them and noticed his patron use especially bold footwork to get off the stage after winning. He arrived at Guzwa's side in an instant. He recalled his own ident I.Tai and hurriedly said. Young master, these golden banknotes, Gongyi Tianhang was in high spirits. You'd better bet these on this young master. A person on the side heard this, turned his head, and approached them. The person in charge of registration and bet placements looked on distractedly. You want to bet all of the 160,000. 
wasn't this style of spending too great? Goose was heart moved and his face stiffened as he straightforwardly placed 16 golden banknotes onto the counter. As a dog threatened based on its master's power, five, he said. Young master's words hold enormous weight and he has always kept his promises. You all are short. Cited over a trifling 160,000. The amount that drips from a cut of the young master's fingertip is more than this, and you're still unhappy with urgently placing young master's bet. This kind, this kind of feeling inside from acting, was very good. The wizened shopkeeper coughed drilly. Place our guest's bet. The person before took one look and his heart trembled in fear. He hastily wrote it down. Who in the stronghold didn't witness this? He was truly too short-sighted. Although there weren't many bets that exceeded a hundred thousand gold, they had happened before. Furthermore, there had even been bets that exceeded several hundreds of thousands in other strongholds. Indeed, one didn't have to make such a big fuss about nothing. After waiting a moment, he realized that he reached his conclusions too early. Perhaps the reason for it was due to the small number of fighters at this time. After two matches on that arena, it was Gongni Tianhang's turn again. Tianhang also didn't stand on ceremony and threw himself onto the stage to fight his opponent once more. Who would arrange the person Tianhang would fight? Besides the special challenger, the others who either watched on fortuitously or dealt with covert operations were all part of the ghost division. This time, Gongni Tianhang was the target of these arrangements. Once he got on the stage, Tianhang could sense that his opponent was like something that had crawled out of a blood ocean. His body's fiendish aura serpa that s that said ugly bulls several times over. Even though the rank was the same, the sense of oppression wasn't. His mind took precautions, but his expression was still very haughty. Instantly, both sides collided. Below the stage, Guzwa watched as his heart began thumping all of a sudden. He could sense a great deal of danger from this person. Patron, he. No, he hadn't revealed his true colors. He still believed in his patron. Ever since Dragon 2 and Su Wenha joined them here, their presences became very faint. However, at this time they took a step forward and joined Guzwa, completely focusing their attentions on the stage. Gongi Tianhang didn't make them lose hope. He used five kinds of martial skills this round. In this violent martial battle, he suddenly used spirit serpent steps. When his counterpart's offensive was at its fiercest, he rushed through an opening and immediately sent an explosive fist at his opponent's weak point. This dealt a serious injury to the person. Afterwards, he showed no quarter and once more snapped this person's neck. Thus, the bookmaker lost again. Even though the odds this round were already 1 to 4, the sum of money they had to pay still reached as much as 640,000 gold. This was an all dot or dot nothing victory. They immediately adjusted the odds at 1 to 2. Gongi Tianhang's opponent became even stronger and more blood dot drenched. It was such a pity. Tianhang still won, this round, he received a small injury, and the gold he obtained was 1.28 million. Underscore 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 one. Lao Zi, I your father, much more common than grandfather, in terms of egotistic self-identification. Similar to yours truly, or, who's your daddy? 2. Tan Yang Da, similar to, which means F-U-C-K, 3. Lao Yang, I your mother, the same as for women. 4. Gui. Um. Z. B. D. A. S. T. J. R. D. Or son of A. B. I. T. C. H. 5. Gojang Rinshur, an idiom meaning to use one's position to bully others. Underscore 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 T slash N. I learned a few more curse words today. Underscore 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 underscore. Please don't forget to support the. Chapter 43. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Upon seeing this, Guzwa furrowed his brows. His patron was wounded. That wasn't good. Although the current tolerance of his patron's body was fine, he couldn't sustain injuries. It would have been wonderful if he didn't get hurt. He went over without delay, still acting as a henchman. 
From his sleeve, in fact, it was his storage S.P.A. at C.E. that he fished out a jade bottle. He stuffed it into his patron's hand, who'd just gotten off the stage. This was undoubtedly the perfect grade chi generating pills. One, when he was in the villa, Goni Tianhang was still fine. But ever since he ventured out, whenever he nearly exhausted his true chi in the stampeding Oxen Mountain range, he used this kind of chi generating pill. Now that he engaged in combat, this naturally wasn't an exception. Gungi Tianhang didn't bother being polite and immediately took the porcelain bottle. He wrapped his fingers around the bottle's body and flipped it. A plump and glossy medicinal pill was shaken out and it plunged directly into his mouth. Afterwards, he pulled a bench over and sat crossed at legged, regulating his breath to recover his true chi. This was the first time he'd done this since fighting someone. On the contrary, there were some people who used their heads and thought about the quality of his pills. However, they could only roughly infer that the qualities were high. The specifics were unknown. Not long after, Tianhang opened his eyes. The vigor in his body was a bit stronger than before. Gu Zhu moved closer and softly asked. Young master, are you okay? Tianhang smiled. I made a breakthrough. Gu Zhu gaped. A breakthrough. Could it be for Meridian condensing third stage to Hotian ninth stage perfect dot grade? However, this Hotian ninth stage perfect dot grade originally referred to the power of the ninth stage being flawlessly polished. One could engage the concept of the half dot step into the Xientian realm. Furthermore, this wasn't a genuine breakthrough. And if one said that his patron already broke through to half dot step Xientian, then it wouldn't seem like such a big deal. During this time, Gu Zhuo was a little confused. Gongi Tianhang saw his puzzlement, but didn't immediately explain. He merely opened his mouth and arrogantly said. You still haven't fetched this young master's gambling money. Gu Zhuo snapped out of it at once and promptly left for the sales counter. The eyes of the wizened shopkeeper standing at the sales counter held a bit of killing intent. With regards to the AES.SAS.SIN organization of the entire continent, the Ghost Division, 1.28 million gold was naturally a paltry sum. However, with regards to such a tiny stronghold, that was already a huge amount of operating funds. It was only that the underworld had its own rules. At least in this stronghold, they couldn't renege on their debts. Also, they couldn't harm these newcomers who gambled with high stakes and won big time. It could only be when, it was in the arena. That wizened shopkeeper's face trembled as he reluctantly smiled. I'm not aware if that young master wants to keep betting. Gu Zhuo turned his head and looked towards Tianhang. Gongi Tianhang raised an eyebrow. What are the odds? Gu Zhuo turned his head again and looked to the shopkeeper. Our young master asked a question. The wizened shopkeeper's mouth twitched. One to two. Gu Zhuo quickly raised his voice. Young master, one to two. Tianhang sneered. Such small odds. Where's the fun in that? Go bring my golden banknotes back. Gu Zhuo again shouted. As you command, young master. Afterwards, under the reluctant gaze of the wizened shopkeeper, the gambling patrons, as well as the greedy eyes of the surrounding martial artists, he picked up that thick stack of golden banknotes and hurriedly delivered it to his patron. Gongi Tianhang shot a glance. I'll just give it to you to hold. Gu Zhuo heard all the people around suck in a breath and restrained his laughter. Yes, young master. Following that, he stashed that stack of golden banknotes into the front of his robes. Then at last, he sensed scorchingly hot gazes from all directions. This feeling was a little dreadful. Gu Zhuo held his breath and hid behind Dragon 2. Ah. Uh. He was just a weak pharmacist. However, while Gungi Tianhang didn't place any bets, his opponent's strength was still even more powerful. Two, the opponent who appeared this round seemed like a terrible beast, no, it should be that when he didn't move, he was like a ghost. And once he moved, he was incomparably vicious. His body was enveloped in a fiendish aura just like a killing machine. It was very scary. At this moment, Gongi Tianhang was satisfied in his heart. He could tell that this veteran killing machine was one genuinely cultivated by the ghost division. 
a killer who'd undertaken countless AS.SAS.Signations. Tianhang didn't know how many lives he'd taken, he was truly an elite AS.SAS. Sin. If he only fought with a couple average hoodlums, why would he have specifically sought out this stronghold? He could have had his subordinates investigate some information to find bandits and so on, then just eliminate them. What he wanted was not only to help train himself against the Ghost Division's novice AS.SAS.Sins, but after Su Wenha's proposal, he already had a plan, what he wanted was the feeling of hanging by a thread between life and death. It was to temper himself in a life or death struggle. It was only when one approached death again and again, did one conquer it. This could allow him to steadily increase his willpower and make him capable of confronting any kind of crisis. From here on, he would step onto the path of the martial artist and reach its peak. As a result, Gung Yi Tianhang used his vaguely arrogant ATT I got tood and large denominations of money to provoke those gamblers' nerves. Afterwards, through his victories, he made those gamblers frantic and made the stronghold's administrator recognize that he shouldn't be messed with. When he stepped on the stronghold's bottom line, he promptly pulled back. Now, the stronghold was finally willing to show their trump card. At this time, the entire stronghold didn't want to let Tianheng live. As he was so unbridled and egotistical, it didn't matter if his recklessness or arrogance was real or not. Regardless of his ident I dot tie, they all wanted to peel off a layer of skin. This ATT I dot tood from the stronghold was precisely what Tianheng wanted. Gongyi Tianheng was crazy. Of course, at this time, Gu Zua hadn't yet discovered that his patron's madness had already started to flare up. He only saw his patron's current opponent shuddering, and innocently waited for his patron's triumph. He firmly believed that his patron would surely achieve a total victory. Underscore 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 this round, Gongyi Tianhang couldn't fight so easily and he didn't conceal his strategies. He fully utilized all his available martial skills and his footwork was unpredictable. Since the last fight, his speed was faster, his fighting was fiercer, his angles of attack were craftier, and his coordination was sharper. Some martial artists' lines of sight often weren't able to react and follow along before he already changed over 10 moves. In dozens of attacks, the sounds of explosions never stopped. There were air dot breaking sounds between the palm strikes he brandished. Many martial artists found that this pampered young master's speed was faster and it seemed he was even stronger. However, it was obvious that there wasn't such a terrifying power before. Wasn't this kind of frightful progress in such a short period of time simply too exaggerated? Or should it be said that this youngster had hidden his strength from the very beginning? That veteran killing machine practically turned into a blackened shadow and could engage from all kinds of elusive angles. He used a terrible power to unleash a certain dot kill strike. Only, these attacks were still obstructed by Tianheng. Their punches and kicks crossed paths and m.unf.fled impacts sounded continuously. The power of this fight's collisions erupted in rumbling bursts. Gung Yi Tianheng was extremely calm. He really sensed a boundless killing intent that wanted to rend his flesh and burrow into his bone marrow. There were even many times when he dangerously avoided those killing moves. In the instant that his counterpart's murderous aura overflowed, he could observe his opponent's bad habits. His body would dodge beyond the predicted trajectory of his opponent's attacks and he could calculate many ways to respond. This was a kind of exceptional insight that seemed inherent. Together with his incomparable IQ, his powerful brain became his strongest resource. The greater the life or death crisis, the calmer his mind became. This made his eyes seem like two mirrors. That killing machine's as to sas signation techniques were all brought into focus. Thus, even though he was a killing machine meticulously cultivated by the ghost division, he could only give Gong Yi Tianheng a few small injuries in the beginning because Tianheng had yet to adapt to his tempo. And the more Tianheng fought, the braver he became. That killing machine truly looked like a machine whose electricity had run dry. He couldn't maintain his lighting dot fast, storm dot like as to sas dot signation techniques any longer. Gongyi Tianhang didn't forget to keep his arrogant expression, but his movements didn't match his expression in the least. He suddenly used heavenly eagle steps and quickly switched it with spirit serpent steps. 
compared to the AES.SAS.SIN, it was still craftier than anything previously. He covertly wrapped around behind the AES.SAS.SIN and used his fingers to snap his neck. That's right. This AES.SAS.SIN's neck was already hardened through training, but Tianhang had prepared early on. He utilized his complete strength to efficiently get rid of the Ghost Division's killing machine. One fight ended. Countless martial artists were bitter and hateful. The majority of martial artists who stayed here for a long time all had exceptional eyesight. And besides a small number of brainless gambling addicts, the gamblers who regularly placed their bets wouldn't let the excitement of the high gut stakes cloud their own judgment. For example, there were some among them who were very successful at calculating. They'd long ago guessed that the high dot profile Gungi Tianheng and his group wouldn't have such a good ending. When that killing machine actually showed up, even more people found that he was different from many of the martial artists here. Naturally, a great majority of the gamblers conscientiously saw through him. They believed that no matter how gifted Tianheng was, he wouldn't risk his life fighting in a perilous, three, place like this. It was impossible to compare to the elite AES.SAS that sinned carefully bred by the Ghost Division. When placing their bets, they chose the veteran killing machine. Who could have thought that it was Gongyi Tianhang who'd ultimately win? One fight after another. Every time the martial artists felt that Tianhang might lose, he always won quite handily. It wasn't until after the Ghost Division's elite arrived that they still had their faces slapped. In the end, this made them sense the stirrings of an abnormal development. Everyone's complexions changed. Guzwa hastily went to greet his patron and continued to offer him the perfect grade chi generating pills. In addition to the perfect grade rejuvenation pills, not only had his patron's clothes become tattered, the wounds on his body were large and small, which produced dozens of rivets of blood. His patron rapidly recovered from his injuries and his strength was restored. Not a single wound was overlooked. Only, Guzwa knew that the following battles would still be hard to fought. AI, his patron was truly too adventurous. Underscore 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 one, I'll be retroactively changing highest quality to a perfect grade. Two, Tianhang stopped placing bets on himself, but he's still fighting in the arena. Three, Dao Shan Shui Hai, knives in the mountains and blood in the sea. It means a location that is so dangerous, a person would die a horrible death. Underscore 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 please don't forget to support the Chapter 44 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Punches and kicks were exchanged in the arena. The shadows of two martial artists intersected and the stench of blood spread out, clogging the nose. Just then, the two people fighting were wounded, no, it shouldn't be said that they were merely wounded. Rather, they were already badly mangled as injuries covered their bodies. Not long after, they exploded with chi. One twisted his body strangely, a cold light blossoming between his hands. The other closed his eyes and leaped vertically, turning his leg into a kick, which broke the former's neck. The one with the strange body technique promptly died and the body of the one who jumped up suddenly swayed back and forth as he slowly walked off the stage. Guzwa heaved a sigh of relief. He couldn't deal with it anymore and rushed over. Gongyi Tianhang directly crashed into Guzwa's body. If Guzwa hadn't practiced his cultivation method, then perhaps they both would have crumpled to the ground from such an impact. Guzwa also didn't mince words as he took out a rejuvenation pill with one hand and stuffed it into his patron's mouth. Afterwards, he held his breath as he checked his patron's health. His clothes were completely ruined and his half-dot-naked body had bl.o.o.d.y holes all over. There were several deep wounds where one could clearly see bone, and there were even some that just missed the heart. It was clear that this was a desperate fight. Fortunately, once Guzwa fed Tianhang the rejuvenation pill, it could be seen by the naked eye that the wound's recovery speed quickened. It was also fortunate that in spite of Gongyi Tianhang's wounds, they didn't bring about any internal injuries. It was also because of this that the effects of the rejuvenation pill were near instant. Gongyi Tianhang quickly steadied his breathing and supported his own weight before getting into a sitting position to meditate. Guzwa silently sighed in his heart. He could finally see a patron, this was crazy. 
It had already been half a month. They'd been eating and living here for these several days. Besides fighting in the arena, his patron had been healing and meditating off the stage. He basically hadn't given himself the least bit of time to rest. Because they were in a crowded, public place, it was impossible for Guzwa to refine medicine. As a result, he could only join Tianheng in meditation. He could do anything fishy at all. Whenever Tianheng beat his opponent and got off the stage, Guzwa was also responsible for going over and delivering medicinal pills, all the while keeping up the appearance of a little manservant. At the same time, Gongyi Tianheng's opponents were getting stronger, craftier, and with greater combat potential. Naturally, they were getting harder to handle. This made every one of Gongyi Tianheng's triumphs miserable, and the injuries he received became more and more serious. However, this wasn't everything. Tianheng's improvement broke through Guzhua's perceptions once again. Guzhua could sense that every time his patron recovered from his wounds, his strength seemed to have a leap in development. No matter how much the Ghost Division spent to push the limits of its cultivated killing machine's potential, with strength that was undoubtedly more terrifying, Gongyi Tianheng could still often be their match. Moreover, by sustaining moderate injuries after his victories, it was obvious that his patron was putting his life on the line every time. However, because his improvement speed was just too fast, it was like he was hiding his strength each match. He absent-mindedly thought about it and he was greatly astonished. To compare the strengths of his patron now to the one in the stampeding Oxen Mountain range, the gap between them was more than two to three times. It was the same for Meridian condensing third stage and not entering the half-step into the Xiantian realm. Could the gap in strength really be this large? If it was just when they arrived at the stronghold. Guzwa's facial expression was a little distracted. Compared to when they first arrived, that ugly bull who exchanged several blows before dying by his patron's hands, if they fought now, wouldn't he be immediately KO'd, one. Thinking up to here, there was a rumbling boom in Guzwa's brain. Though his patron was so powerful, he still fought like his life depended on it. He wondered if he shouldn't have entrusted the to his patron to figure out. After all, pharmacists and martial artists were different. Even with his patron's IQ, he wasn't able to formulate a workable cultivation plan. Could the reason have been that his patron wasn't a pharmacist? Perhaps. Guzwa clenched his fists. After leaving this stronghold, he simply must make an attempt. After Gongyi Tianheng finished regulating his breath, he returned to the shopkeeper to get a tile. However, the opponent he met on the stage this time wasn't like the killing machine before, this also wasn't considered too strange. In the days leading up to here, he definitely couldn't fight a killing machine every time. After he quickly disposed of his opponent, Gongyi Tianheng left the arena and waited his turn again. Yet, the next fight still wasn't a killing machine of the Ghost Division. After that, the third match, fourth match, fifth match. After a whole day, there totally wasn't a single worthy opponent. Tianheng's brows furrowed a bit. Immediately, he turned his head and his expression wasn't happy. How could all of them be such trash? Aren't there any more powerful opponents? Could it be that the magnificent ghost division doesn't have any more? That wizened shopkeeper heard this and his face revealed a pained expression. This young master's strength is incomparable. We truly were unable to find an opponent who could beat the young master. We ask that the young master to be lenient on us. Guzwa. He felt that this dialogue had an undertone of a raging sea, too. Gongyi Tianheng's gaze flashed, showing a somewhat disdainful look. Since it's like this, then just forget about it. This young master's stay here has been somewhat boring, so I'll just leave. Then, he laughed grimly, one's reputation can't compare to meeting in person. The ghost division only amounted to this. After he finished speaking, he turned around and left while taking large strides. Guzwa cracked a smile. He didn't completely understand why his patron wanted to draw so much enmity, three. This mouth was simply too rotten. Could it be that he was unafraid of the ghost division's people ganging up on him once he left? Even if it was for the sake of staying in character, this sacrifice was rather large. 
Or could it be that his patron already felt that fighting the people here wasn't invigorating enough, and wanted to employ a bunch of people to fight all at once? He simply felt helpless. What could he do when he started to worry over his tiny life? However, the developing situation was nothing like what Guzwa thought. Just as his patron took five or six steps out, the wizened shopkeeper suddenly shouted for him to stop. Young master, hold on. Gongyi Tianheng halted mid-step. You have something to say. The face of the wizened shopkeeper was eagerly attentive as a smile bloomed. Young master, please don't take offense. This old bag of bones wants to ask the young master about a certain matter. If the young master agrees, my ghost division wouldn't be able to thank you enough, Tianheng looked a little interested, and opened his mouth charitably. This young master will listen to your question. The wizened shopkeeper lowered his voice. May I ask the young master what the name of those medicinal pills that were used for treating your wounds? Where can they be purchased? A scowl flit across Gongyi Tianheng's face. Why? Did you want to take these? The wizened shopkeeper promptly said. That really isn't the case. Young master, please calm down. This old bag of bones absolutely doesn't have any intentions of prying. It's simply that the young master also knows that my ghost division serves as the blade of the people. It's unavoidable for some to die young. But if we had that kind of medicinal pill on hand, surely there'd be many more pitiful souls who could survive. With such medicinal effects, my ghost division is naturally willing to pay huge sums to purchase those pills. We have absolutely no intentions of taking them by force. Guzwa couldn't help but silently curse. Acting as the blade of the people, huh? How big is your face? Gongyi Tianheng's expression relaxed. Okay, there's no harm in telling you all. This thing is the unexpected windfall of this young master's subordinate pharmacist. It's a rejuvenation pill of a higher grade. Compared to common rejuvenation pills, it's seven to eight times better. If you want it, you can only get it from this young master. The wizened shopkeeper guessed this early on. At this given moment, he became even more polite. Then, would the young master be willing to part with his treasure and share some with us? Between the meaning of those words, that ATT I got toot of his was practically crushed into the mud. In the end, this was exchanged for Tianhang's arrogant scoff. It looks like your heart is sincere. Fine, I'll share some with you. Fifty gold per pill. I'll give you a thousand pills each month for fifty thousand gold. You only need to fetch them at the Lauren Hall. Once he finished talking, he flicked his sleeve. He was unconcerned with the wizened shopkeeper behind him, who was still requesting more medicinal pills. He immediately left this place. Guzwa couldn't help but stare blankly. Just then, his patron made another business deal. Even though 50,000 gold wasn't as huge a profit as when he fought, if left to ACC. You'd emulate over a long time, he'd accrue upwards of 600,000 gold. That could be considered a very good source of funds. Could it be said that this business deal was already thought up long ago, or that it was decided upon just now? Next to his patron, Guzwa's IQ didn't seem sufficient to be of use. Similarly, Al-9 had been accompanying them here for the past half month. At this time, he increased his presence once more, and deferentially sent them off. After they paw s. said through the lengthy darkness, a group of people finally saw the sun in the sky again. Afterwards, Gang Yi Tianhang and the others got on a carriage and spent several days slowly strolling around and enjoying themselves in the city. Only when they seemed tired of it did they leave. Underscore 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 en route. Under Dragon 2's excellent carriage driving skills, there wasn't any feeling of BAU to MPS or jolts. Guzwa sat next to Tianhang and couldn't understand it at all. He tried to restrain himself, but he still softly asked. Young Master Tianhang, why did you want to sell the rejuvenation pills to the Ghost Division? The Ghost Division are all as.sas.sins. If their mortality rates declined, wouldn't they continuously expand? Isn't this a little? Gongyi Tianhang reached out his hand to ruffle Guzwa's hair. His voice was rather deep and magnetic. The ghost division is a blade. 
and so long as someone has a need for that blade, they will never disappear. While murderers are the blade, wielding that blade is desirable, and people's desires are endless. Ah. Swa, selling them the medicinal pills and selling them for the sake of those martial artists fighting for their lives is no different. And currently, we still can't officially release our medicinal pills. Having such an underground channel to carry out our sales also is a way forward. I'll only have to ask. Ah. Swa to work hard. Each month you'll need to refine over 20 cauldrons of rejuvenation pills. Naturally, those sold to the Ghost Division will have to be high-grade rejuvenation pills. Tianheng's voice was soft. Can. Ah. Zua do it. Gu Zua thought about it, and nodded. No problem. He understood that his patron was supplementing his means of making money, and for. Moreover, what his patron said was really reasonable. This world was different compared to the modern era. His patron understood this better than he did, so he needed to pay extra attention. Thinking about this, Guz was suddenly quivered. Young Master Tianheng, the Ghost Division profited a lot of money from our victories, but they lost dozens of elite aids.sas.sins. We've also revealed such an obvious target as the upgraded version of the rejuvenation pill. If the Ghost Division wasn't willing to let this go, what should we do? Gongyi Tianheng grinned meaningfully. Something as precious as the pill's prescription would certainly wouldn't be taken out lightly. So, before the Ghost Division investigates it, they'd hate to start anything with us. Guzwa. So, that's to say, this was also planned. Underscore 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 one, the author used the English letters KO. However, Tianheng is definitely killing his opponents instead of just knocking them out. 2. Bo Tao Xiong Yong, an idiom meaning a perilous situation. 3. La Chou Hen, colloquially known as the pulling or drawing aggro, in game terminology, but obviously this phrase doesn't fit in this story setting. 4. Tua Quan, broaden, Kai Lu, financial path. Underscore 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 please don't forget to support the Chapter 45 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com Guzwa's nervousness suddenly vanished. Although his patrons acting these past few days seemed quite bombastic, they only had to depart from the stronghold under the protection of the Empire the Wide Gongi clan's intermediaries. They would smoothly leave without any problems, after all, wasn't the deployment of a bodyguard and manservant for this kind of young master just too ordinary. In addition, as for his patron's frail reputation, apart from an extremely small number of confidants, even the members of the Gungi clan were unaware that his patron could already practice martial arts. Also, his strength was outstanding. The investigations of those outsiders were sure to receive many obstructions. It would be very difficult to link this crazy, pampered young master to his patron. Thinking about this, Goose was bright gaze looked over. Gongi Tianheng laughed and pat his head. It's been a while since we came out, so we'll head back immediately. Guzwa happily said. Okay. Saying this with gusto, he sincerely missed the villa. Sure enough, the journey back was both easy and difficult. Naturally, they had a pleasant journey while going through the easy regions and didn't encounter any hindrances on the road. Yet while they were in the difficult regions, Gongyi Tianheng received some news that the Ghost Division's people really tried to tail them, but they were all obstructed, in addition, once the agreement had been reached, they didn't dare take things too far to avoid affecting this business deal. However, it was obvious that specific matters could become unclear. They'd better pay attention to the customer's feedback after the first deal was finished. This was something that the Tianheng in the future had to worry about. Soon, a couple of people secretly returned to the villa. Dragon One and a youth who looked like a carbon dot copy of Gongyi Tianheng came out and welcomed them. Gu Zhu carefully sized him up and discovered that the youth's looks and stature didn't have a single flaw. Even his personality could have been imitated 70 to 80%. If he wasn't someone who was especially familiar with his patron, then it was very likely to have been basically impossible to detect. Dragon One quickly reported everything that happened recently. 
Guswa saw that his patron was very busy and didn't delay in going to the secret room to give his patron today's medicinal decoction and cuisine. Most of all, although his patron's body could already practice martial arts, his meridians didn't serpa that s that s even the most average martial artist. He had to make up for all these deficiencies at this time. It took about a week before Gongyi Tianhang entered the secret room. Guzwa had just finished refining a thousand high-grade rejuvenation pills and handed them over to Dragon One. At this time, he had enough strength to refine perfect grade qi generating pills for Tianhang's medicinal pill reserves. He turned his head and saw his patron come by. He was a little puzzled. Young Master Tianhang. After they got to know each other, his patron didn't frequently come to watch him refine medicinal pills. Did he have some instructions? Gongyi Tianhang smiled slightly. I'll be leaving in the afternoon. I didn't want to go without telling. Ah, uh. Zua. Gu Zua blanked. Where does young master Tianhang want to go? Tianhang said. I'll be bestowed a medal of honor and I'm going to continue a few missions to get some practice in. I'll be out for about three to five days. During this period of time, I won't inconvenience you to refine medicinal decoctions or cuisine for me. Guzwa understood. He nodded his head and replied. I hope young master has a pleasant journey. Tianhang smiled. Ah. Zua can practice while in the villa, but be very careful. Everything I've explained on the is written on paper. If you want to experience it yourself, remember to avoid advancing prematurely. Goose was heart warmed. He laughed as he said, Rest as assured, young master. I'll certainly be very cautious. Tianhang nodded before swiftly leaving, off to face another kind of self. Tempering. He didn't bring anyone with him this time around. Dragon 1 handled the work at the villa in his stead. Dragon 2 was as. Signed by Tianhang to closely guard Guzhua. Although Guzwa wasn't too used to his patron's departure, he felt that he himself wasn't a child. Thus, with a heavy heart, he continued refining medicine. Underscore 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 that evening, Guzwa was sitting cross-legged on a couch. Behind the empty bed across from him, his eye fell upon what was spread out before him. Gungi Tianhang had interpreted the into a book for him. His heart was a little nervous. Previously, Tianhang wanted to thoroughly understand the spirit piercing all. However, up to this point, he didn't know why he wasn't able to clarify the overall context. Thus, Guzwa couldn't practice it at all. After their trip, Guzwa suspected that a pharmacist's const. I. Tushin might possibly be related to this. As a result, Gongyi Tianhang thought it over and simply translated the spirit piercing all word for word. The meaning of the words were written straightforwardly. His way of thinking and reading comprehension were never once brought up. With near perfect precision, the formal language was translated into everyday speech. Guzwa moved according to his patron's diligence as he carefully read that sheet of words. Sure enough, he found that he easily understood them. With this kind of slow dot paced reading, it was like subconsciously immersing in it. Absent mindedly, his entire consciousness seemed to enter some sort of mysterious s.pa at ce. If Guzwa was clear.headed, then he would have certainly discovered that this mysterious s.pa at ce was in the depths of his mind. With countless strands of entangled smoke. like psychic power, one couldn't see that abstruse thing clearly. The place the system was located. The recorded words of the started echoing in Guzwa's mind. The echoes were naturally not in everyday speech. Rather, the incomprehensible syntax of the formal language was spoken word for word. It was like countless waves rushing forth in a rising, overlapping tide, with continuous fluctuations. At the same time, the free up floating, chaotic physic power started to coalesce into rippling circles together with that voice. Then, the ripples started to converge, facing towards the center. Through the repet I. Tias beating, each layer would oscillate. And with each oscillation, it would attract even more smoke. Like psychic power. They rotated around the center and grew into more numerous, thicker ripples. Slowly, a somewhat transparent gelatinous substance took shape in the center. 
As more smoke dot like psychic power turned into ripples, more ripples oscillated and condensed into that gelatinous substance. However, there wasn't much of it. After a long time, only a needle point's worth could be produced. But even though there was only this much, it transmitted a sense of power that was dozens of times stronger than the smoke dot like psychic power, as much as over a hundred times. However, after the psychic power was continuously attracted over, there was almost none left in the large S. PA at CE. Although the system's location was barely discernible, it left a person incapable of grasping it. But the entire S. PA at CE was no longer in such a crowded mess like before. Merely, the gelatinous substance was still taking shape. The continuous beating waves were already decreasing and their strength was becoming insufficient. There was a sharp, stabbing pain. In only a split second, Goose was suddenly woke up, holding his head as he faintly twitched on the couch. DAM.NIT, what just happened? Subconsciously, Goose were rapidly started using the divine medicine cultivation method, absorbing the natural chi around him and turning it into energy. As for the numerous, twisting milky white medicinal chi he had on hand, they all quickly entered his body like running water. Afterwards, the pain was alleviated. As more medicinal chi emerged, they were absorbed into his body even faster. Guzwo slowly exhaled and got back into his sitting position. At this moment, what occurred just now was gradually sorted out by him. He was finally going to figure out what kind of thing there was in the end. This was an extraordinarily special martial skill. Moreover, this really was suited to only pharmacists, or rather, it was a psychic power martial skill that only suited pharmacists who practiced the divine medicine cultivation method. In the wake of the cultivation method's usage, a person who practiced the divine medicine cultivation method could upgrade the state of their physical body and lengthen their lifespan. Psychic power could obtain growth due to having compatible medicinal chi. At the Tianfu acupoint, which was located in the head, there was a wandering smoke dot like appearance. And the smoke dot like psychic power was the most inferior psychic power. At this time, the spirit piercing all's emergence was just for the sake of refining this psychic power. After studying the spirit piercing all, the smoke dot like psychic power could be encircled and, like a sea wave, be repeatedly concentrated with ever strengthening oscillations. This kind of layering and strengthening was very formidable. It could turn psychic power into that gelatinous substance. This gelatinous psychic power met the basic conditions of this martial skill. Three steps. Spirit forging, spirit congealing, spirit piercing. It was exactly like this. The current Guzwa was merely in the middle of the spirit forging process. His psychic power was vastly inadequate. And in order to rapidly strengthen the gelatinous psychic power, the smoke dot like psychic power had to be even more enormous. Therefore, the amounts of medicinal chi he needed had to be increased multiple times over. The spirit piercing all had joined the divine medicine cultivation method. This was simply just an exploitation now, ruthlessly squeezing the little cabbage Guzwa. The reason why Guzwa had a headache just now was due to a warning of insufficient psychic power. Later on, because of the spirit piercing all's powerful spirit forging function, it spurred the divine medicine cultivation method to rapidly activate absorbing countless strands of medicinal chi to form smoke dot like psychic power. This alleviated his pain. In other words, when Guzwa wanted to practice the spirit piercing all in the future, he had to discharge a lot of medicinal chi to meet the basic requirements. Otherwise, the deficiencies in psychic power would cause a headache. With a headache, he could either stop practicing or wait to be drained dry and become an idiot. And in order to obtain enough medicinal chi, all right. In the future, there'd be even more, non-stop medicine, refinement. The only thing that could be considered fortunate was that the gelatinous psychic power was still goose was psychic power. Later when he refined medicine, so long as the internal true chi was used to support his hand arts, he could continuously refine. He wouldn't have to worry about his psychic power being insufficient. At the very least, he wouldn't have to worry about refining the medicines he already knew about. Guzul used his psychic power to examine his storage s.pa.ce and found that he still had plenty of milky white medicinal chi stowed away. He promptly stopped thinking about it too much and continued practicing. 
once he reached the spirit-piercing stage, he would have the power to defend himself. Before that, even if he invested a lot into the process, it'd be worth it. Three days later, Gongyi Tianhang returned. Gu's was heart stirred and he hurried finished refining the medicinal pills on hand. Then, he dashed outside. He would tell his patron about his huge improvement. Underscore 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 please don't forget to support the Chapter 46 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com The moment Gung Yi Tianhang came to the doorway, he saw his little pharmacist's excited face. As Gu Zwa bounded over, Tianhang couldn't help startling slightly. Although his little pharmacist's expressions were very abundant, the times they were so excitable were still very rare. What happened? Guzwa rushed outside and discovered that he was excessively emotional. Once he stopped, he lowered his voice and said. Young Master Tianhang, I know how to practice the spirit piercing all. Tianhang's eyes flashed. Oh. He started walking with Guzwa as he talked, entering their two-dot person room. Dragon 1 and Dragon 2 kept watch outside. After the room's door closed, no one could hear what happened inside. Gong Yi Tianhang sat down and asked. Can. Ah. Uh. Zua tell me the details. It went without saying that Gu Zua planned to do just this. Without any hesitation, he immediately talked about the course of events concerning his own practice and the current situation of his psychic power. He explained everything in full detail without missing anything. After he listened, his interest was piqued and he pondered deeply. For the sake of his rubbish body, he deeply researched the continent's martial artist cultivations. Previously when he couldn't cultivate, he made modifications to cultivation methods. Once he met Gu Zua, he discovered that pharmacists like that didn't seem to be as simple as he thought. Naturally, this generated a huge amount of interest. Only, it was unfortunate that even though Gu Zua didn't withhold anything from him, Tianhang was not a pharmacist in the end. He didn't possess medical beads and was incapable of studying things related exclusively to pharmacists. He could understand what was written about the spirit piercing all, but he could never figure out the context or enter a state of self.study. Now that he had listened to Guzwa's words, he developed some speculation. A pharmacist's medical beads could have possibly been the reason why they couldn't practice a martial artist's martial skills. However, Pharmacists had their own technical skills that utilized psychic power. Similarly, they certainly had their own attack capabilities. Besides, their ability to refine medicine complemented each other. It looked like it was absolutely incorrect to say that pharmacists didn't have any abilities to defend themselves. Rather, those kinds of pharmacist skills had already died out. However, Gung Yi Tianhang wasn't completely convinced of this conjecture. Because Guzwa's spirit piercing all was obtained through that Sodot called system, there was also a possibility that Guzwa, with a system that recognized a host, could study it while other pharmacists were incapable. Or maybe Guzwa met certain conditions, and these conditions weren't the system but something else. Still, no matter how many theories he had, it was currently impossible to verify them. More importantly, while Gengi Tianhang had a heavy penchant for gambling, he was extremely prudent. This was certainly a new discovery that could undermine the whole continent. He couldn't simply let other pharmacists attempt it. One could know a person for a long time without knowing their true nature. Once there was an attempt, whether it was a success, failure, or some other possibility, the consequences were not currently within his control. And he wouldn't rashly meddle with things he couldn't control. After thinking it over, Gongyi Tianhang gently said. Since it's like this. Ah, so I can keep refining medicinal pills to collect medicinal chi as before. Ah, so I doesn't need to worry about the required herbs. I'll certainly do my best to get them for you. Guzwa's face warmed up a bit. He clenched his fist and tried to restrain a sentence. The medicinal pills I refine will all belong to young master Tianheng. There wasn't a better patron than Gung Yi Tianheng in the whole world. Even if there were, he felt that his patron was the one most suited to him. This matter didn't waste too much of the two's time. 
Since Tianheng knew that this spirit piercing all was useful, under an increased peak of interest, he still spent some time researching. In addition, he also told Guzhua to wait until the amounts of ACCU. Mulat gelatinous psychic power met the lowest requirements for the spirit piercing all. Then he could make an attempt at using other methods of controlling them either through self.discipline or strengthening his powers of self.control. Moreover, there were still many functions of psychic powers that made him want to figure out to avoid harming the body. Guzhua understood Gongyi Tianheng's words of wisdom and he naturally did as he was told. Dozens of days, Pa S. but said until finally he could use the technique to shape his psychic power. He didn't hesitate to make another attempt. This time, Guzhua was pleasantly surprised. This was because he discovered that if his thoughts were sufficiently powerful, he could extract psychic power and make it enter another person's body. Although this required that the other person didn't use their true qi to interfere, it could be used to examine his patron's health without a problem. In fact, Gongyi Tianhang also cooperated. Now that Guzhua grasped nearly all of the ins and outs of this thing, the followed-up care for the Tiandu body would depend on him. What secrets could it still be hiding? Gongyi Tianhang automatically allowed Guzhua's psychic power to enter him. The faintest and most sensitive conditions within Tianhang were reported back to Guzhua. The results were also clear and easy to see. After a period of time, Guzhua gave his patron several examinations every day. For example, he examined him before and after practicing martial arts or using his cultivation method. He examined him after eating medicinal cuisines or soaking in medicinal decoctions, as well as before going to sleep. And the medicinal cuisines that had been one meal a day became several meals a day. In short, whenever Gongyi Tianheng found himself hungry, tired, or in a poor state, he would immediately get Goose was medicinal cuisine delivery. He never experienced this kind of meticulous care even when he was at his weakest. Meanwhile, Tianheng's physical body grew more powerful, the general circumstances of his meridians stabilized, and his own strength steadily rose. And as for Gu Zua, the medicines he refined every day weren't only the qi-generating pills and rejuvenation pills, he was still researching even more prescriptions to start preparing. One could say that no matter if the work was refining medicine or attending to his patron, it all went smoothly. Everything was very harmonious. It was just that after he took his patron's pulse today, he discovered something that made him want to jump with fright. The corner of Guzwa's mouth curled as he stared, dumbstruck, at his patron. His patron's courage. Previously, was he still underestimating it? A meridian condensing third stage martial artist could open 72 earthly fiend acupoints. See that you mulatively, this was Ho Tian ninth stage perfect dot grade, and one could attack the Xian Tian realm at the right time. It was like this since ancient times. However, the human body didn't only have 36 heavenly spirit acupoints and 72 earthly fiend acupoints, numbering 108. There were still hundreds of acupoints located inside and out that had never been opened previously. But Guzhua clearly discovered that his patron opened an acupoint within the three Yang foot meridians, one. He had condensed a bone pearl in that acupoint. That's right. It was precisely the Tiandu body's hundred unblocked acupoints. These hundred acupoints were the 108 heavenly spirit and earthly fiend acupoints, but the others still had blockages. Merely, they were far from the serious blockages of common martial artists and opening them wasn't as difficult either. However, despite not being difficult, he couldn't be so reckless. Guzwa was speechless. Wasn't his patron a little too, unconstrained? Dongyi Tianhang saw Guzwa's hard.pressed expression and couldn't help smiling. Ah, Zwa, why such a miserable look? I only altered the cultivation method. I feel that this one's more suitable. Guzwa heard this and straightened his expression. The cultivation method young master Tianheng created has this kind of requirement. Tianheng slightly muttered to himself, saying. Correct. After I reached meridian condensing third stage, I still felt that I was far from achieving perfection. If I tried to initiate Xiantian, then it was very likely I could fail. After I made several attempts, I found that another acupoint was very easy to open. Once it opened and I refined the Xiantian Qi within my meridians, 
The chi was too powerful and it was hard for my meridians to support it. Usually, it was dispelled through my acupoints and was really quite a waste. But just as I changed my mind, a bone pearl was condensed in that newly opened acupoint and the outflowing Xiantian qi being refined was stored within, Gu Zua understood. Then later, young master wants to condense even more bone pearls. Tianheng nodded. The heavenly spirit and earthly fiend acupoints total 108. I feel the internalized true qi flowing towards six directions. There seems to be six cycles, and these six together serve one large cycle. In this realm, I'm afraid that I'd have to condense five sets of acupoints, totaling 540 bone pearls. Guzwa felt like lightning had struck his forehead. 540 bone pearls. Was he being teased? Wait, that's not right. Currently, his patron had only condensed 72 earthly fiend acupoints. If there were six sets of acupoints, then there should have been a difference of five sets with 72 times 5. That's 360 acupoints. How did the heavenly spirit acupoints correspond to the calculated 180? Gungi Tianhang saw through Guzwa's questions and said while smiling. Because this can be considered indulging in fantasy, the other acupoints actually serve as Hotian acupoints. Therefore, once I condense all the bone pearls in this realm, and after I've finally gotten to the Xiantian realm, I just need to condense the 36 Xiantian bone pearls. Tuo Guzwa practically wanted to lie flat on the ground. So that was to say, his patron still had 539 remaining, right? Thinking about this left him blinded. Gongi Tianheng's gaze brimmed with expectation. So, is, ah, uh, Zua willing to help me? Guzwa said dispiritedly. I'm willing, fine. His patron was ambitious. He was unwilling, but also willing. He just wouldn't think about the difficulties, and so on. Still, he thought that once his patron succeeded, his strength would frighten the world and make ghosts and jito.ds weep. In response, Tianheng's brows rose slightly. Later on, I'll still need. Ah. Uh, Zua to work hard. Guzwa lit a candle for himself in his heart. After that, he once again shined with vitality. Rest as assured, young master Tianheng. There's still several months, I'll certainly do my best. Tianheng's expression softened. I'll also do my best. Under such a DAM. Naval mission issued by his dear patron, Guzwa wanted to hurry and claw at a wall, 3. After carefully thinking about it, he felt that this matter wasn't too rotten. For example, it was just like the problem of how his patron's meridians were too weak. The meridians were connected by the acupoints. After they were filled with enough bone pearls, whenever large amounts of natural chi entered the meridians, it could be immediately absorbed in these bone pearls. On the contrary, it would decrease the impact on the meridians. Moreover, if the meridians were damaged by this overflow, the small rupture would be braced by the bone pearls. The repairs would also be easier. Then, as his patron currently wanted to condense so many bone pearls, the acupoints of his whole body would be in a state of hunger. One might as well stop his patron from absorbing natural qi and just directly stuff him full of qi-generating pills. In any case, he could refine this thing very easily. Underscore 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 one. Zhu San Yang Jing, a group of three meridians belonging to the twelve principal meridians. They are primarily located from the foot through the torso to the head. Two. Five sets of 72 earthly fiend acupoints and 36 heavenly spirit acupoints equals 540 acupoints. The final sixth set isn't in the calculated 540. I think. 3. Now Chang, an expression meaning to feel dejected, helpless, or suppressed. Underscore 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 please don't forget to support the. Chapter 47. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Let's discuss the problem with the qi generating pills value. As mentioned previously, a pharmacist's cultivation wasn't easy. The rate of successful pill refinement wasn't high. Even though the qi generating pill was the most common one, one pill was worth two gold. 
With such a large Gongi clan, not to mention a lone martial artist, the numbers of attracted martial artists were not small. If one wanted to supply the qi generating pill, how could there be an unlimited amount to offer? Their salary was like this. If they were of the Gongi clan's younger generation, a blood forging realm would get one qi as assembling pill, one a month, a bone forging realm got two per month, and a meridian condensing realm would switch to using qi linking pills. If they were a martial artist attracted to the Gungi clan, then a blood forging realm wouldn't receive any qi generating pills. A bone forging realm got one qi generating pill a month, and a meridian condensing realm got two per month. Even though it was like this, wanting to support so many people heavily bled the Gungi clan's resources. Calling this a salary was already very generous. If it were a small family, only the younger generation of the innermost core would receive this kind of treatment. It was basically impossible for outsider martial artists. One had to realize that medicinal pills were in short supply. In addition, for martial artists who consumed qi generating pills, no matter how gifted or extraordinary, the limit was two to three pills a month. It simply wasn't possible to rely completely on qi generating pills for cultivation. However, Guzwood discovered that his patron could do it. Other martial artists could digest a pill in about 10 days. Gungi Tianhang eating a pill was like throwing a pebble into the water without even the sound of a splash. It would take at most 15 minutes for him to completely absorb it. Perhaps this was another powerful point of the Tiandu body. Similarly, it was because of this that Guz would dare to maintain his confidence in his patron and did his best to refine medicine like an old ox. 2. Following him on this gamble. Ah. Uh. On second thought, he still had crazy fits of rage and jealousy. Naturally, after Gongi Tianheng heard Guzwa's proposal, he cheerfully agreed. When he saw through Guzwa's concealed thoughts, he smiled and didn't mention it. The truth wasn't what his little pharmacist imagined. Digesting the qi generating pill. The Tiandu body definitely wasn't the reason, or rather, it wasn't the entire reason. From the first time Guzwa refined pills, he obtained the perfect grade qi generating pills. He himself hadn't yet sampled different kinds of qi generating pills. So he didn't know that the Tianlong Guard under Gongyi Tianhang's administration received the benefits of a perfect grade qi generating pill each month. Their senses couldn't be more clear. The higher the grade of the qi generating pill, the easier it was to absorb and the ampler the energy within. After using a perfect grade pill, being unable to use it again was simply a kind of torture. Gongyi Tianhang once used a dose of high-grade qi-generating pills, and contrasted its effects with the perfect-grade pills. The medicinal power of those high-grade qi-generating pills simultaneously promoted the gathering of his true qi, and also brought about a slightly woozy sensation. In the process of continuously using his cultivation method, the things that caused this woozy sensation were slowly expelled through his pores. At this point in time, he developed a theory. Although taking medicinal pills was faster than absorbing natural qi for cultivation, there were, nevertheless, impurities within the pills, which needed to be expelled by using a cultivation method. The higher the grade of the medicinal pill, the less impurities there were and the faster one could absorb its medicinal powers. Martial artists in the past definitely weren't incapable of digesting even more qi-generating pills. Rather, they would just accu.mulate qi and expel impurities at the same time. Thus, they wasted a lot of time. However, this method was still faster than simply absorbing natural qi for cultivating, and it made martial artists scramble for medicinal pills. Seeing Guzwa busily rush about, Gongyi Tianhang faintly smiled. His little pharmacist really could be counted as his biggest chance. Underscore 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 under a big tree, Guzwa suddenly opened his eyes. In a split second, an extremely slender and faintly indiscernible silver needle appeared and shot out. Like a ray of light, it hurtled towards a block of stone that was about a meter tall. Soon after, there was the sound of a bang and that huge rock suddenly exploded into pieces. Gongyi Tianheng, who stood on the side, saw this and praised. Good. Goose was expression immediately turned joyous. Young Master Tianheng, I did it. Tianheng laughed. Sure enough, the spirit-piercing needle is fearsome. 
That strike just now is comparable to a fold-up powered strike of a Hotian 7th stage martial artist. Moreover, it's completely silent. Even if it was me, if I didn't pay complete attention from the start, I couldn't have easily discovered it. Goose was face reddened. I also didn't expect that using a bit of psychic power in the spirit piercing needle would have this kind of might. If I could have layered the psychic power before, it should have been even more powerful. The current him was now a person with the ability to defend himself. Although his martial technique was no good, the spirit piercing needle could be considered an essential sneak attack tool for killing and pillaging in any situation. 3. Tianhang asked in a gentle tone. That spirit piercing needle, Guzwa said with some pity. The one I use no longer exists. He wasn't resigned to it, but he didn't think it was odd. A martial artist attacked with martial skills full of true qi, and the true qi within couldn't be reclaimed. When he examined his patron's body and condensed medicinal properties within his eyes, he used almost none of it. This was already very good, so he couldn't insist on even more. He also wasn't a person who was too greedy. Gong Yi Tianhang pondered for a moment. How many spirit piercing needles can? Ah. Uh. Zwa condense with his remaining psychic power. Guzwa A.S. Sest. 18 needles. Tianhang nodded. Since we know about the spirit piercing needles power. Ah. Uh. Zwa, you just need to upgrade your application speed. You must accomplish this move with a thought so that the spirit piercing needle can travel according to your will. As for double layering or the might of several layered needles, you should take advantage of careful familiarization. In my time as a martial artist, whenever I extracted my true chi and later restored it, my tolerance grew larger and my recovery speed became faster. A great number of things are interconnected. We may assume that psychic power is also just like this. Guzwit answered straightforwardly. Rest as assured, young master Tianheng. Gong Yi Tianhang smiled as he ruffled his hair. He took a qi generating pill and quickly went back to practicing. Time quickly Pa S. said. In the blink of an eye, it was several months later. From taking one qi generating pill a day, Tianhang would later take ten a day, ten pills. The acupoints within his body were like gluttonous monsters that were never satisfied, like whales voraciously swallowing all the natural qi available. This kind of spectacle was thoroughly shocking. In particular, Dragon One, who stayed beside Gongyi Tianhang from the very beginning, was beyond astonished. Guzwa steadily supplied qi generating pills, mostly for the Tianlong Guard. Apart from the arrangements of a small number of major affairs, all other missions were halted and changed to collecting all kinds of medicinal ingredients from across the Songyun Empire and AMA. The S. Bot said at the villa. Because they worked cautiously, the business deals between the Ghost Division and Gongyi Tianhang were on the right track. At this time, the Ghost Division made several attempts at tracking him down, but ultimately, all clues were eliminated and vanished under the chess pieces of Tianhang's administration. The value of Tianhang's martial strength rose to an inconceivable degree. Guzhua clearly saw that his patron's body had already condensed 459 bone pearls, with only 153 left. Then he'd reach his body's limits and would have to prepare to enter the next stage. This seemed like too much, but one only had to remember that the previous 400 bone pearls were condensed within a short several months, then one wouldn't feel it was so difficult. Besides, as Time Pa S. said, the condensation of bone pearls sped up and the stockpile of true qi increased in size. The current situation was that the true qi within Tianhang was incomparably vigorous. He prepared to develop six sets of bone pearls within his body. With that in itself, his strength would be multiplied six times over, and his strength would be far stronger than the great majority of martial artists of the same rank. If the current Gongyi Tianhang went to the Ghost Division stronghold to take part in their training of killing machines, then it'd probably be just killing people like slaughtering dogs. What's more, Guzwa's progress wasn't the least bit small. He could simultaneously carry out all three steps of the spirit piercing needle. He could use spirit forging to quickly turn the smoke dot like psychic power into gelatinous psychic power. He could use spirit congealing to extract the psychic power and turn it into a silver needle. And he could use the spirit piercing too. Guzwa could already achieve what Tianhang stated. 
The silver needle followed his will and, with a thought, he could shoot the needle from any direction, angle, or trajectory. He also discovered that the silver needle was merely the first stage. When he AMADS. said countless silver needles, it formed a sharp silver drill. like device. It could bring about great destructive power that far serpent that s. said the silver needle. This spirit piercing needle could be used to attack physical objects as well as be turned into a partially intangible attack on an opponent's Tianfu acupoint. Once the Tianfu acupoint was damaged, the opponent would be turned into an idiot. After Guzwa thoroughly understood that the was as awesome as the 13 gates of enlightenment, a four, he sunk into fit of giggles. This was practically a weapon that could save his life. Unless if he lost consciousness or if it was a Xiantian martial artist, no one could approach him. Finally, now he didn't lack the strength to truss up a chicken. Although he wasn't yet an adult, he finally had a sense of satisfaction in having power. Perhaps, this was the feeling of a powerful man. Even if he wasn't a warrior who fought for a cause, he was still considered to have some sense of security. After this, Goose was enthusiasm amplified. He used his cultivation method, practiced the spirit piercing needle, and refined medicine around the clock, all for the sake of nursing his patron's health. If this kind of continuous upgrading continued, then the journey back to the modern era wasn't so unattainable. However, the time that the Azure Dragon Pool opened was fast approaching. It was to be on the afternoon of the third day from now. Before the clan's top eight fighters received permission, they had to go to the Tsongyun Imperial Palace tomorrow. They had to pay their respects to the Tsongyun Emperor and accept the royal family's test. Only those who were finally capable of Pa S. But Sing were then able to get a placement. The allotted placements of the Azure Dragon Pool were priceless. So long as a martial artist devoted their heart to the martial path, then they wouldn't easily give up. This year, Gongyi Tianhang gave it everything he had. All of it was precisely for this one day. Underscore 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 in the afternoon. Dragon dot scaled horses were gathered just outside, and the bronze chariot was made ready. With his hands clasped behind his back, Gongyi Tianhang walked out. Dragon One and Guzwa walked behind him to the left and right. In a secret location, Dragon Two lay in wait. Out in the open, 200 Tianlong guards stood before their horses and bowed in greetings. At this time, they would leave for the Gongyi Mansion. Dragon One took the lead and marched in front. He turned around and kneeled, fanaticism etched across his whole face. In a clear voice, he shouted. We wish for the young master's great victory and return home. Numerous Tianlong guards also identically kneeled. We wish for the young master's great victory and return home. Gongyi Tianheng smiled. We march. Many Tianlong guards said. We obey, as the young master commands. Guzhuo saw this clearly, and his heart welled with Pa S. Shaun. At long last, this day was here. If his patron was able to succeed. His mind had a premonition. Gongyi Tianheng, just like a hidden dragon who'd been silent for so long, once he broke through the abyss, he would soar about the highest heavens. Underscore 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 one, the author used, which means accu.mulating slash as.sembling instead of generating. Two. Lao Huang Niu, a worker who is industrious and obedient. 3. Zhu Jia, in the home, LV Xing, on the road, Sha Ren, murder, Fang Hua, arson. 4. Two things. Slang for awesome, Buddhist term of entering the path of enlightenment, nowadays it refers to studying ethics. Underscore 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 t slash n and attention readers, I have several things to say. Also, surprise on a double weekend update. First of all, thank you everyone for keeping with me so far. This is the final chapter of the first volume. It has been a pleasure to translate this story. For the next few days, I'll be taking the time to review, edit, and standardize my translations thus far. If there was anything you read that you feel that I could change, please let me know in the comments. For example, I'm considering how I should be capitalizing certain named objects. Things like people, cities, or certain attacks are already capitalized, 
but should I extend this to all named objects? Let me know about this or other things down below. Second, I read each and every one of your comments. And though I don't respond, it's mostly because I want to avoid clogging up the comments section and over-inflating the number of true comments. Nowadays, I usually reserve replies to direct critiques or suggested corrections. Third, I'm not sure if it's more conducive to generating a discussion here on this blog or creating a thread on novel updates. It'll be up to you guys to decide. Finally, as this is another milestone for me, I'd like to remind everyone that this translation is based on the hard work of the original author. Please consider supporting them. Underscore 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 please don't forget to support the Chapter 48 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com The Gongyi Mansion The current clan had Gongyi Yen, the Madame Lu Suyen, and the three children happily welcomed them. The eldest son was inherently smart, but his luck wasn't so good. Therefore, he liked peace and quiet. It was for this reason they let him leave. It was only because these close relatives rarely reunited that they personally came to greet him every time, allowing the eldest son to experience their affections. Gongyi Tianheng's gaze warmed. Just like every time previously, he followed his many relatives into the reception hall and proceeded to his grandfather Gongyi Zhuoyue's training room. After paying his respects to his senior, everyone sat down. Gongyi Zhuoyue sighed. Tianheng, why have you come back at this time? His beloved grandson clearly understood that he was merely going through the motions. Usually, the clan war allowed Dragon One to fight on behalf of his beloved grandson only under the compromise of all sides. The Azure Dragon Pool's placements were so precious that it was basically impossible to let Dragon One go and enjoy it. Were his beloved grandson to go this time around, he'd certainly be ridiculed. Even while he was insulted by those young children, his beloved grandson was very open minded. It was just that even though they were savage thugs, how couldn't one's heart not care at all? Gongyi Tianhang faintly smiled. When has this grandson failed to act appropriately? This time is an excuse for saving face. If it weren't needed, how could this grandson be observed? Grandfather, carefully have a look at me. Gongyi Zhuoyue stared blankly. Tianhang remained calm and extended a hand. His palm was slender and his skeletal structure was surprisingly pure. It went without saying that it was a palm that couldn't be more beautiful. At this very moment, this hand suddenly clenched into a fist. Bang. This indicated great power. The true qi had overflowed externally, giving rise to a qi burst. Gongyi Yan's pupils suddenly shrank. This is a Zhuoyue's face showed a look of rapture. Under his excitement, his palm slapped the ground. Unexpectedly, this caused the green steel stones used in the floor to explode with several cracks. Tianheng. You, you already can practice martial arts. Very quickly, Gongyi Yan and Gongyi Zhuoyue both coincidentally sensed Tianheng's qi. The two were Xiantian realm powerhouses, whose spiritual senses were incomparably strong. Once these senses were opened, the situation of a martial artist who'd yet to enter the Xiantian realm could be immediately perceived. Afterwards, these two generations of clan head couldn't help crying out. Meridian Condensing Stage 3 Your Ho Tian Stage 9 Perfect Dot Grade Tianheng, your qi and blood are full of vigor, your physical body's strength is also very powerful. Tianheng grinned, his gaze deep and serene. Correct. I'm already a perfect dot grade realm martial artist. Merely a year has Pa S. Bot said now. How strong are Helian Xingqing and the other four? They can't be that much stronger than me. Naturally, I can throw my hat into the ring. Gongyi Yan was astonished for a long time. Little by little, he managed to say. Tianheng, you really frightened your father. Shuayua laughed boisterously. My wonderful grandson, you really went through a lot to keep this from your grandfather. At this point, apart from the toddler Tiantung who didn't have high comprehension, Lu Suyan, Gongyi Tianyang, and Gongyi Mingxia were all pleasantly surprised beyond measure. Big Brother can practice martial arts. I just knew Big Brother was an unrivaled genius. Lu Suyan's beautiful eyes teared up. 
Hung. Um. My hung. Um. You, are you all better now? Your lifespan's fixed, right? Hearing these words, the rest of the many Gongyi family members simultaneously looked towards Gongyi Tianheng. Tianheng said straightforwardly. Precisely. You all don't need to worry about me anymore. A soft light flashed through his eyes, in the future, I'll keep on living. And his ambitions would allow him to strive on no matter what. Guzuo stood with Dragon One in a corner, silently watching for a long time. The care shown between close relatives was just like this. The people of the Gongyi clan truly were very sincere to Tianheng. However, there were also types of family members that basically weren't true family members, which people loathed. Just like. At that moment, he recalled memories of previous events that he hadn't remembered for a long time. Memories that still broke his heart. However, until the time that he could return to the modern era with the help of his patron, he should have the power to undo that heartbreaking matter. After everyone in the whole household looked over Tianheng, they started asking about the whole sequence of events. While Guzhuo watched his dear patron, he felt helpless wondering how he would use white lies to trick his closest relatives. Ultimately, the reason still fell to that prescription his patron raised up previously, although that thing merely looked the part, it actually wasn't suited to the correct diagnosis at all. It was natural for Guzhuo to once again experience the baptism of the gazes of the clan head and his blood relatives. If one said that the prescription he offered, which could supposedly allow Gengi Tianheng to live a few more years, would already make the clan head and the others grateful, then a confirming that a secretly sought pharmacist improved upon that prescription to fully heal Tianheng, and even allowed him to achieve the martial power he currently had just prior to that decade's rare chance of the Azure Dragon Pool's opening, would make it so that when they looked at Guzhua, it was like he was their own son. 1. Guzhua felt chills on his back. Lu Suyan was a tender woman. Now that this matter, which had worried her for many years, was settled, her countenance became gentle and soft. She affectionately looked over Guzhuo's small body for a bit and repeatedly urged Tianheng. Little. Ah. Uh. Sua should also be considered your benefactor. Hung. Um. From now on you'll have to treat him like your flesh dot and a blood little brother. Guzhuo was overwhelmed by her favoritism. Suddenly changing from a nurtured worker to such a high CLA to SS I didn't I got tie was something he was very unaccustomed to. Even though he knew that this kind of statement definitely wasn't like accepting him as an adoptive brother or making him, and his patron sworn bothers, saying this kind of thing out loud was different from not saying it at all. He still understood. Gongi Tianhang was laughing. Mother, I've already been treating. Ah. Uh. So I like my little brother for a long time. His temperament is like a cute kid, he's very intelligent, and he has talent as a pharmacist. Previously, he was merely too polite. In the future, he'll call me big brother. Saying this, he looked at Lu Suyan's supportive looks and the lack of any opposition in his father and grandfather, and couldn't help raising an eyebrow. Then he looked to Gu Zua, his tone very gentle. Ah, uh. Zua, why don't you try calling me? Gu Zua. Things are changing too fast. Patron, I can't bear it. Gongyi Tianheng's meaningful look clearly carried an expectation and hint of persuasion. After receiving this look for a second, Guzhua couldn't bear it any longer. Once his heart starting scratching at the walls, he opened his mouth like he wasn't afraid of death. Big Brother Tianheng. Tianheng faintly smiled. Get rid of the last two words. Guzhua. Big Brother. Tianheng was satisfied, and he reached out a hand to pat Guzhuo's head, saying. You must say it like this in the future. Tianyang and Mingxia held their big brother Tianheng in the highest esteem. Their gratefulness to Guzhuo also wasn't less than the others. At this time, there wasn't anything to be unhappy about. Instead, they were all smiling and laughing. Gongyi Mingxia, the little girl of the family, hugged Guzhuo's arm with a grin. This time, older brother. Ah. Uh. Zua isn't only just in name anymore. Guzhuo felt helpless. The stubborn youth Tianyang wasn't disagreeable right now and bluntly said. Big bro, Zua. Guzhuo felt even more helpless. Gongyi Tianhang couldn't help smiling. 
Switch it around, Yang. Um, Tian Yang earnestly said. Big bro. Ah. Uh. Zua. Gu Zua finally gave a sigh. Following that, Tian Ting, the barely coupled at years at old who was already steadily walking, toddled over in small, brief steps and hugged Gu Zua's lower leg. A serious dot looking face said. Ah. Uh. Zua, big bro. Gu Zua, who was a little stiff, forced a smile with great difficulty and said. Held at age, dot e to l dot low, everyone. Once these words came out, even the seniors couldn't help laughing. Guzwa's thoughts nearly showed on his face, but to them it couldn't be easier to see through. This kind of person didn't threaten Tianhang in the least. In addition, for the favor of saving his life, even if they treated Guzwa as an adopted son of the Gongyi clan, it'd be worth it. The atmosphere now was still very harmonious. And Guzwa was held right in the middle of these friendly relations. Although Guzwa wasn't genuinely familiar with the clan head or the family, in this kind of environment, his heart slowly relaxed deep down. Okay, so he was an obedient worker. The boss wanted Guzwa to call him big brother, then he'd later change his views. In any case, his former patron was now his big brother. This really conformed to his ideal image of an older brother. Underscore 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 early the next morning, the Gongi clan head gathered a relatively large group of Hyatt status elders from the main branches, one, who led their own numerous outstanding descendants, to the main hall to discuss official business. Guzwa found that there were indeed many of these elders in the main branches. More than a hundred who hadn't entered secluded cultivation had come. After congregating, it suddenly made this originally S.P.A. at Sias Main Hall seem very narrow. Those who could sit in chairs were branch elders who each held some authority in the Gungi clan. There were some who had wild ambitions, others who followed orders in mediocrity, and some who preferred leisurely quiet and contentment. But it could be said with certainty that there wasn't a single one who was incompetent. Among their other main branches, there were many brilliant youths. The chi and blood of the martial artists reverberated within the main hall. Without any reason, it fired up the mood. Guzwa found that these people were looking towards the vicinity of the clan head Gongyi Yen. They looked at his patron, Big Brother. Most were feeling pity for him and a few regarded his Big Brother as a thorn in their sides. Not to say that they harbored evil intentions, but they didn't have any goodwill. And as for the younger generation, most of their gazes were very reverent, and the rest had envious hatred in their eyes. Truthfully, placing all that jealousy and anger on his big brother was all in vain. Big brother was the kind of person sent by heaven who specialized in beating down a person's self.confidence. Rather than wasting time giving oneself chest pain, it'd be better to just give up. At this moment, even though there were many people, no one made any noise. Gongyi Yan's expression was solemn and his eyes continuously concealed his glee, that's right. He'd yet to fully recover from the joy of his son's sudden increase in strength and transformation, into the younger generation's genius expert. Ladies and gentlemen, I, Gongyi Yan, have something to say. It concerns a great matter to my Gongyi clan. You all are my main branch mediators, so after listening to this matter, you mustn't act covertly together with the other clans. Otherwise, once this clan finds out, clan law will be implemented and you will be stripped of your clan status. All of you are smart people. When someone is enticing you guys, it's because you're part of the Gungi clan and you all have the status of the Gungi clan. Once this status is lost, then it's certain that no one would dare sell out the clan. Don't save a little only to lose a lot and suffer another's instigations. You all understand. These words were so serious. How couldn't they understand? There weren't any fools among the people of this large clan, especially these elders. No matter how much they desired to vie for the position of clan head, they also knew that one's honor and disgrace was intimately connected to the clan. After listening to the cautious warnings of the current clan head, they could carefully restrain their current temperaments so that they didn't become like that of an impetuous younger generation. It was only that the elders didn't understand what the important news was that deserved such prudence. They thought about today's tests of the imperial city, but they also knew that the Gongi clan was destined to never have a chance. Could it be that the clan had thought up a way of redeeming face? 
Deng Yan breathed deeply and said with a solemn countenance. My eldest son, Gongyi Tianheng, had already completely recovered from his illness a year ago. And through a year's worth of hard work and practice, he is now 19 years of age and is a Ho Tian stage 9 perfect grade martial artist. These words were spoken and a huge clamor filled the room. What? The young master actually, that's impossible. But, if it's true, this, what kind of apartment I attitude is this? Underscore 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 one. Can you believe that this whole paragraph is still technically one sentence of an if that then clause? This one sentence slowed me down a lot. TT carrot TT two. D she. Thanks to user Carissa for the clarification. Underscore 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 T slash N. Welcome to volume two. The first sign of budding talent. Sorry I took over a week to get the edits done as well as get the next chapter translated. The updates should return to the normal schedule. Underscore 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 please don't forget to support the Chapter 49 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. In response, Gongyi Tianhang stood up and, without any reservations, released his own chi. Instantly, his chi and blood was like a signal that flooded out and kept climbing. With an incomparable force, this chi gave people an oppressive feeling. Compared to an ordinary Hotian stage, 9 perfect dot grade, it was even more powerful. There were several elders who immediately widened their eyes. They were also Xientian realm powerhouses. Naturally, they could also perceive this younger generation martial artist without any doubts. At this moment, their thoughts were churning and their moods were psyched up. Yet, their first response unexpectedly was, with the Gongyi clan having this child, it was inevitable for their position to be secured for over a hundred years. So long as the Gongyi Tianheng advanced to Xiantian without any problems. At this time, the feelings of reverence to Tianheng became even more paes but cyanate, and the original fires of jealous rage burned even hotter. But once they sensed that terrifying chi, those flames extinguished with a poof into a long sigh. In any event, Gongyi Tianhang was a member of their main branches. The side branches had many experts during the clan war, which gave the younger generations of the main branches a lot of pressure. And they knew that once the young master of the clan head took to the stage, he would bring them, the main branches, much honor. Tianhang put away his imposing aura. After the packed clan members were quiet for a time, their minds became determined. Since the Tianwu continent respected martial arts, when Gongyi Tianhang didn't have any martial strength and only had a high IQ, there was always someone who wouldn't recognize his contributions to the clan. They would want to challenge the clan head to seize this position. However, now that Tianhang could practice martial arts and displayed his alarming apartment ayatude, he put an end to all these voices. Within the Gungi clan, there existed a struggle between the main branches and the side branches. However, the reason why the status of the main branches had been stable for countless years was due to the unanimous treatment of the side branches. For the sake of its own orthodoxy, when the side branches abruptly rose to power, the main branches would unite and put aside their internal struggles. And the side branches were divided into 52 branches although they also had several that could unite for the sake of benefits and cooperation, they were isolated among various regions of the Tsongyun Empire. They still couldn't compare to the main branches, which had dwelled within the clan's ancestral residence for a long time and whose people were close. Knit. This was also a rule established by the Gongyi clan's founding generation, which had already been carried out. As a result, even though the side branches produced many powerhouses generation after generation, the bloodlines of these powerhouses had been merged into the main branches. In the end, they were incapable of destabilizing the main branch's status, which forced the side branches to establish a presence in the ancestral residence. There was an elder whose face showed regret. What a pity. If the young master could have practiced martial arts since childhood, with his apartment I got tooed, wouldn't the other four young masters of the great clans be like ordinary chickens and dogs? The other clan members heard these words and revealed similar expressions. Just so. It's truly too unfortunate, the apartment I got to Gongi Tianhang displayed was too astonishing. 
it was difficult for them to avoid sighing. They even thought that since he could reach this stage in merely one year, if he started practicing martial arts from childhood, what stage could his realm have reached now? Perhaps, he could have reached Xiantian long ago. He could have even serpented us, but said these old men. With this kind of exceptional genius appearing out of the main branches, then the Gongyi clan could possibly threaten the royal family. Guzhua, who maintained his identity at Tai as a little servant, stood with Dragon One in a corner and watched all this. He couldn't help shaking his head. These people were just too greedy. His patron, Big Brother, had great ambitions, skills, apartment identity, and intelligence. He could practically be considered flawless. What was so serious about being a couple years late? With his big brother's strength, he could quickly catch up. Then it'd be inevitable for him to leave the others behind. Now, wasn't a nice surprise a good thing? No matter how much a person's heart was lacking, don't reveal it so obviously at such a time. After living on the Tianwu continent for over a year and often being supported by Gongyi Tianheng, Guzhua understood a lot of things. He smirked and secretly thought, if Big Brother's strength slowly improved since childhood, he'd greatly surpass us, thus the others. Yet, he couldn't live while being targeted by a s.sas. since day and night. If it really was like that, Guzwa couldn't believe that the other four great clans could ignore the rise of his Big Brother. On the contrary, his Big Brother's sudden rise was unstoppable. Once he entered the imperial capital and obtained a placement to the Azure Dragon Pool, it wouldn't be so easy to scheme up any dark plots against him. Gongyi Tianhang lifted a hand and spoke clearly. Rest as assured, everyone. I will certainly obtain a placement to the Azure Dragon Pool and seize the opportunity of achieving Xiantian. All for the honor of the Mai Gongyi clan. Everyone also needn't worry about what happened in the past. The clan members regretted their behavior caused by their human nature, but Tianheng knew that if he didn't have his little pharmacist to refine countless top-grade qi-generating pills, it'd cause him to needlessly waste a large amount of time absorbing ambient qi and halt his daily consumption of medicinal cuisines and soaks in medicinal decoctions. Even though his apartment attitude was very high, it wasn't a certainty that he'd obtain the same achievements now. All martial artists knew how precious pharmacists were and the one he had was the most precious, whose understanding was especially profound. Only, for the sake of safety and the clan's plans, he absolutely couldn't let anyone else know about Guzwa's abilities. The numerous elders didn't understand his way of thinking, but after listening to his speech, their regretful murmurs ended. One after another, they laughed and grat, I got tood. That's right. Things in the past don't need to be brought up. We only need to look towards the future. The current young master has many accomplishments, so we hope that you can watch over our descendants. Please raise the prestige of our Gongyi clan. Gongyi Tianhang smiled and made this promise. Through his strength, the Gongyi clan's honor would prosper. There weren't any conflicts between the two sides, so naturally there weren't any reasons to decline. After everyone's excitable moods gradually cooled off. Numerous Gongyi clan members began to discuss and follow behind Gongyi Tianhang as their candidate to the Imperial Palace, won. At first, they thought that they'd lose a lot of face and they weren't at all prepared to bring too much manpower. But now, not only were they not going to lose face, they could also watch the heroic appearance of the returning young master's first undertaking. It was only natural that there were even more numerous and difficult choices to make for those who wanted to go. Guzwa had an absolutely helpless look as he watched that spectacle which was like a food market where one haggled over prices till they were red in the face. His frame of mind was a little complicated. But he quickly felt happy since this scene was because of Tianhang's emergence. He also was a little excited. Although it was a bit pretentious, in the wake of his lengthy time interacting with Tianhang, he truly considered this person to be the one he was closest to in this world. Being able to call Gongyi Tianhang big brother. Deep in his heart, he wasn't unhappy about it. It didn't take a genius, too, to know that it would take a very long time to cultivate enough strength to return to the modern era. And with such a long time, it would be too lonely to live in this world without the cherished memories of his loved ones. Though, he did obtain something he was emotionally invested in. Gongyi Tianhang was very good. 
Guzwa also wanted to treat him even better. While Guzwa's mind drifted, the members of the Gungi clan already settled on this person. Besides the Xiantian Stage 3 clan head Gongi Yen, there were also two Xiantian Stage 2 elders, and one Xiantian Stage 1 elder. They were all CLAS'd at Sifid as Qi Breathing, three a realm Xiantian powerhouses. Their strengths were very formidable. Yet, with only this, it was an insufficient lineup to protect the exceptional genius Gongi Tianheng. As a result, Tianheng's grandfather, the senior generation clan head Gongi Zhuayua, also followed along. He was at Qi forming stage 1, that is, he was a Xiantian stage 7 powerhouse. With every clan's immortal realm venerable antiques all in secluded cultivation, it was a situation where they all mutually curbed one another from rashly acting out. He couldn't ask to assume the heavy responsibility of protecting Gongi Tianheng. Previously, when the clan head and his bloodline's powers were insufficient, they could still tower above without collapsing. To a large degree, this was all because of Gongi Zhuayue. In addition, twelve of the younger generation similarly went out. Among them, nine were the lucky few of the main branches. One of them was the clan head's second young master Gongi Tianyang. With the other eight, they were all preeminent youths of the clan war. As for the other three, they were the strongest powerhouses of the side branches. After the clan war, they were recruited into the main group for nurturing. At this time, they were also brought along, it was for the purpose of broadening their horizons as well as molding this batch of youths with the mindset of uncrowned kings, for. As for the next batch. It depended on the realm advancements of Gongi Tianyang and the others. If they were suppressed by the side branches, then it would be the main branches' incompetence. Underscore 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 something could be seen far away from the lofty imperial palace. A majestic intermediary of the Gungi clan was riding upon an incomparably huge wild beast. This wild beast was a grade 5 wild beast and could be compared to a Xiantian Qi breathing stage 2 martial artist. It also was clan head Gongi Yan's combat pet. The shape of its body resembled a gigantic tortoise, but behind it was an extremely terrifying tail composed of countless barbed whips. Its exterior was completely covered with sharp thorns, and its head was malevolent beyond measure. Its existence brought about a sense of absolute oppression. Even though the road to the palace had been evacuated long ago by the Gongi clan guards, the foolish martial artists in the nearby houses could hear those heavy footsteps. It brought about a kind of feeling that curdled the stomach and stopped the heart. The grade 5 wild beast was too scary. At the same time, the other four great clans also sent out their immense combat pets. They were all equivalently grade 5, and every wild beast was extremely frightening. After the initial M.U.F. fled sounds of their approach, the closer they got to the palace, the shorter the distance became between the five wild beasts. Once the distance got short enough, a higher grade wild beast's dignity wouldn't tolerate the close proximity of existences of similar rank. Between their imposing auras, they naturally started confronting and oppressing each other. Among them, the Hellion clan's grade 5 gigantic wild beast stomped its leg. Boom. The powerful impact force radiated out. Its power formed a ripple that spread in all directions. Wherever it went, innumerable rocks were transformed into fine powder. Guzwa was caught off guard along with many of the children of the Gungi clan. As a result, he felt a jolt in the pit of his stomach and instantly felt a huge repressive force on his heart. Furthermore, a couple of the younger generation already had some blood leaking from the corners of their mouths. Gongi Zhuayue's brows furrowed. That Hellion clan has become more and more domineering. Although the younger generation suffered a small loss, it was far from the point where the old folks had to step in. It truly left a person's heart in a bad mood. Tianhang's line of sight swept across the thing appearing from the other road. He looked at the person standing on the top of the giant creature's head and his complexion faintly deepened. His body moved slightly and he stood next to Guzwa and Tianyang to obstruct the never-ending waves of that power's fallout. Guzwa promptly activated his cultivation method to lessen the feeling of nausea in his mind. After that, an even more imposing aura appeared ahead of them from the imperial palace. Immediately following that, there was a resonant cry of a bird. A huge shadow flew out from the palace like a black could. 
It was a tremendously large bird of prey, and a tall and sdu.r.dy man stood on its back. A member of the royal family had appeared. Underscore 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 one the author used, which can mean imperial city, but since they're already in the city, it must be referring to either the palace or an inner region of the imperial city. Similar to the forbidden city located within Beijing. 2. Yong Jiao Ji Tu, Xiang, to use one's toe to think, something that doesn't require thinking. 3. Han, to suck, keep in your mouth without chewing, qi, self.explanatory. We've reached the second rank for martial artists. Please check the table of contents for reminders on the ranking system. 4. Wu Mian Ji W, Diane Nut Ji, I'm not sure if this means that they act like rulers, a king in all but name, or soldiers on a leash, a powerful man whose authority has been taken away. Underscore 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 please don't forget to support the Chapter 50 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. The approaching man was handsome, large, and tall. His bearing was broad and magnanimous. Even though he was still far away, a person could sense that his body contained an explosive power. One could imagine that this man's strength was incredibly great. He stepped on that gigantic bird, whose incomparably huge figure was over 30 meters long. After it extended its wings, it cast a dense shadow. The bird's plumage opened up and the feathers were like knives. Its thick, prestigious pressure blanketed the sky and earth. The giant bird's speed was very fast. In the blink of an eye, it appeared above them, floating in the air motionlessly. After it showed itself, the five grade five wild beasts knew their place and didn't cause a commotion like before. Because this giant bird was a grade seven wild beast. It was also the sole grade seven wild beast in the entire Tsongyun Empire. It was a wild beast comparable to a Xiantian Qi gathering powerhouse. Regardless of bloodline, grade, or smarts, this Cirrus Cloud Falcon 1 could crush any other wild beast. And although wild beasts' grades shared a similarity with martial artists, their lifespans made it impossible to compare their strengths. The Cirrus Cloud Falcon acted as the empire suppressing falcon deity. Not only was it a symbol of strength, it was also the symbol of the royal family. Apart from the falcon, in the many years the five great clans operated, they could never tame a wild beast of equal rank as a combat pet, the position of the royal family was very steady, and this falcon was like adding flowers to a brocade, too. The person on the back of the cirrus cloud falcon stood upright and unafraid. He cupped his fist and said. On behalf of the orders of the father emperor, this song you respectfully welcomes all you powerhouses. Please follow me, everyone. He was the ninth prince song you. According to rumor, he was the royal family's number one genius. The present Songyun emperor had 18 children. Among them, 13 were princes and 5 were princesses. Currently, the position of the crown prince hadn't been established yet, but the first three princes had already broken through to become Xiantian powerhouses. They removed the three princes who hadn't grown to adulthood, which left seven, who were for the most part at the meridian condensing realm. There even was Song Yu, who used his Hutain stage 9 perfect upgrade realm to sweep away many of the princes. He was even capable of trading a few blows with those three Xiantian stage 1 elder brothers. Song Yu's age was equal to the current five great young masters, but he already reached his current realm at 15 years old. He continuously ACCU.Mulad experience and honed himself during the many years he didn't break through. As for his apartment I got tood, compared to Helian Xingqing and the rest, he was even more successful. And as for wisdom, he had it in spades. Perhaps ordinary people and martial artists didn't know the name of the ninth prince. He was far less famous than the brilliant five great young masters. However, the upper echelons of the five great clans always paid close attention to him. At this time, Seeing Song Yu's heroic and exuberant appearance caused Helian Xingqing and the others to seem lackle.u.s.ter. In response, several clan heads inevitably sighed. Even for this current generation, the royal family could still stably push our heads down. Though, only the upper echelons of the Gungi clan had their expressions slightly changed to match. 
However, in the hearts of this group of old foxes, they didn't have the tiniest feeling of suppression. Song Yu was truly powerful beyond compare, but thinking about the young master's skills made their throbbing hearts immediately settle down. No need to mention the other four great young masters. Even the legendary Song Yu wasn't any greater than their young master. At this moment, all of the members of the Gungi clan felt honored. Underscore 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 goose was true chi circulated through his body, as he hid behind the solid back he recognized as his big brother, which blocked the wind. Originally, he acted as the adoptive younger brother who didn't have the qualifications to tag along. However, all of the clans could bring a couple guards to follow along. Gungi Tianhang didn't feel at ease if Gu Zhuo stayed by himself at the mansion, so Tianhang just took him. Truth be told, he also really wanted to go. Ah, uh, the Imperial Palace. Another world's Imperial Palace. Gu Zhuo had never seen it before. Back in the modern era, he never had the time to see the Imperial Palace that was left behind since ancient times. On the contrary, now that he went to another world, he had the opportunity to visit a palace. It was only natural for his curiosity to get the better of him. Besides, he still felt uneasy concerning his big brother. The Tiandu body was a bomb. This big brother's own idea was very big. If he encountered any problems killing, then he'd be close by to take care of things. Since Guzwa had his psychic power to check on Tianhang's internal Sirk Yudam stances, he had a comparatively large grasp on his own medical expertise and was amply confident. However, no matter how good that a medical expertise, there were places where it was inevitably impossible to put to use. For example, right now. Although they stood on the back of a grade 5 wild beast, the clan tolerated the beast's slow walk, but his weak chicken dot like body failed to withstand a single step. One didn't even need to mention that he nearly vomited blood from the shaking of the grade 5 wild beast. At this time, once Song Yu came, the grade 7 wild beast immediately quelled the grade 5 wild beasts. Afterwards, the people of the Hellion clan didn't cause any more mischief. The five great clans all came from five different directions and arrived before the gates of the palace. With a sound that rumbled the sky, that extremely wide, metallic gate lifted up, which let the five wild beasts carrying everyone enter together. Past that impossibly wide wall, there were countless buildings which rose and fell like a mountain range. There were many majestic main halls that towered high above. One didn't know what materials were used in their construction, but under the illumination of the sun, they shined with a kind of ancient and reserved eld.us.ter. When they arrived before the palace's seat of extreme might, the five giant beasts stopped their footsteps. After the cirrus cloud falcon circled around in the sky once, Song Yu leaped off and his robes thrashed in the wind. His entire body was like an artillery. Shh! as he ferociously smashed into the ground. As he rose amid the dust cloud, he instantly used his power to brush it all away and not a single speck of dirt was on him. Very awesome. Only this kind of jump could make a person sense his power that couldn't be compared by human standards. Countless martial artists from the Hellion, Sima, and the other clans, all jumped off the giant beasts. Above all, Hellion Xingqing and the others, who stood on each of the beasts' heads and accepted the leading roles in the tests, displayed exquisite techniques as they fell to the ground with confident ATT attitudes. Their dispositions were even more vigorous. And after they dropped to the ground, Xingqing in particular turned his head to look at the one who stood on that giant tortoise beast that embroidered robe-wearing, beautiful young master. He didn't hide the sneer that covered his face. If they didn't have a previous clan AS. Association, the people of the Gungi clan should have felt humiliated and resentful. But now, their expressions were a little subtle. Guzwa lightly scratched the side of his face. This was probably like a feeling of being told a plot spoiler in advance. Thinking about the face slap waiting below, he didn't know if it was supposed to be extremely awkward or something. An. Gungi Tianhang was always prepared to leave those by his side very satisfied. Moreover, it was obvious that when they were finally in the palace, they could sense many eyes watching them. It wasn't necessary to hide anything anymore. So, at this moment, Tianhang took a single step forward. 
Following that, his body was like an eagle as he somewhat floated in the air. Then his robes fluttered in the wind and he calmly descended to the ground. This process only took a few seconds, but to others, it was as shocking as a tsunami. Song Yu's pupils contracted, Gongi Tianheng, he could actually practice martial arts. At the same time, a pa s. Cyanate urge to fight boiled out of the bottom of his heart. This was his rival, his long. Expected rival. He truly wanted to know what the skills of the current Tianheng were capable of. If one said that Song Yu's mental state was unmatched in its rising vigor, then those of the other clans were completely different. Especially Helian Xingqing, whose complexion kept turning red or pale. His gaze was like looking at something he truly hated. Sima Yuanyo's expression had huge changes. Duanmu Qingrong and Huangfu Zhanghao slightly frowned. However, they didn't know why there was a feeling of something finally settling in their hearts. They, who had found out many secrets, knew that Tianhang's IQ was far above their own and that he couldn't practice martial arts. In their hearts, they inwardly rejoiced and celebrated. But ultimately, they themselves weren't willing to admit that they were afraid. However, regardless of what notions they had in their hearts, those were all meaningless now. Gongyi Tianhang's abrupt rise to power was already certain, so much so that, great waves appeared in Duanmu Qingrong's heart. He always felt that even if the clan wanted to carry out an A.S. The S.A.S. Cination on Tianheng, perhaps it was already too late to prevent his rise. In the wake of Tianheng revealing his strength, everyone in the Gungi clan showed their smiles as they jumped off the wild beast. Dragon One grabbed Gu Su's arm and they disappeared into the crowd of Gungi clan members, all without raising any suspicions. Everyone paid attention to Gongyi Tianheng, including the elders and clan heads of the other four great clans. After digesting this news, although they were shrewd enough to not reveal too many clues, there was still a flash of killing intent. Yet, it couldn't be ignored, they really wanted to kill Tianheng. It was just that the success of this AS.SAS.Cination depended on Tianheng's performance during the test. The atmosphere became much too strange. Song Yu said clearly. Everyone, please follow me into the palace. This voice broke the silence. Everyone restrained their thoughts and took large strides forward. Gu Su wrinkled his nose as he started thinking about how to help his big brother increase his strength from here on. Speaking of this, at this stage, the only things he could offer to support Tianheng were those. However, he was under close scrutiny. If someone wanted to mount a sneak attack on his big brother, don't blame him for secretly piercing that person's brains. So long as he was allowed to watch, then that person would become an idiot. Underscore 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 within the palace. A man wearing a full dot body robe with cloud patterns stood on a high level. His features seemed only 30 years old. His aura was extremely valiant and it mixed with the surrounding area. It seemed to encircle the entire palace, and made it so a person wouldn't dare look straight at him. Even that trace of power didn't lack overbearing strength. Even though it didn't deliberately focus on anyone, it caused one to sense an intense attack. It was very scary. When Song Yu walked over, after he bowed and greeted that man, Song Yu stood to that man's side. The two of them were standing, one up above and one down below. The Qi connection gave one the feeling of an astonishing resemblance. No doubt, this honorable man wielded the power of the Tsongyun Empire. He was the exceptional powerhouse who already reached the Xiantian Stage 9 realm. The Tsongyun Emperor, Tsong Lian. Reportedly, he was merely a step away from advancing to the legendary immortal realm. With a doubled lifespan and being free and unfettered to travel between heaven and earth, he would suffer no restrictions. The numerous clan heads were all very respectful to this Songyun emperor. They also similarly followed protocol. This was the respect granted to this powerhouse. Gu Zua looked at this monarch and his heart was shaken. However, he quickly suppressed this shock. Because no one else understood better than him that even though this Songyun emperor was currently stronger than his big brother, it would take too long for his big brother to serp a dias him. He firmly believed this. Underscore 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 one. Ling, soaring, high, icy, yun, cloud. 
I could change the name to Soaring Cloud, but it loses the second meaning of icy. Hence, I use the Cirrus Cloud, which is one of the highest altitude clouds formed from ice crystals. However, if it turns out that ice has nothing to do with the bird, then I'll change it to Soaring Cloud Falcon. 2. Jing Shang Tianhua, to decorate something already perfect. Underscore 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 t slash n. The t i dot tlee was a little off to me. Do you think I should change it to something more accurate like face slapping exposure method? Underscore 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 please don't forget to support the